Hello fellow homebrewers, JP here, and I want to introduce to you the brand new Brewbuilt X1 Conical Series available at More Beer. More Beer sells the highest standard in homebrewing equipment, and the Brewbuilt Conicals are just that. They're made from mere polished 304 stainless steel, and they come with loads of features that you and I have been looking for. They have a full 2-inch bottom dump valve, which will eliminate your clogging issues, while the sturdy base includes four reinforced legs, just like those big pro tanks do. More Beer also carries the Brewbuilt line of options and add ons like casters, pressure kits, and even external glycol chillers. So you can find out more about the new Brew Built X1 Conical Uni Tanks by going over to morebeer.com for detailed videos on the entire line of Brew Built Conicals. You can trust Brew Built with your next fermentation, and you can trust More Beer to find the right conical for you. Brew Built at morebeer.com. The Brewing Network Sunday Session is brought to you by Homebrewing Superheroes, the fine folks at More Beer. Visit them online at morebeer.com. If you really want to be one of the best brewers there is... I stopped uh, dressing all in plastic. You better be brewing five to six times a week. A beer, every beer, is made with love, and it begs to, to be appreciated. I need something to kill the salmonella I'm kind of worried about in the eggs. Do you find that uh, that the hops kind of clash with the uh, chicken embryo you put in there? <laughs> well, I might sleep here tonight. It's a California <laughs> king. There's plenty of room for both of us, Beavis. Yeah. How many of the brewers over there have seen your ass? That's Clearly. it. Someone's getting cut tonight. All yeah. I have to say is, hey, McDowell, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> no. Live from the Brewing Network Studios in Northern California, this is the radio program for home brewers, craft brewers, beer lovers, and beer geeks. It's your only source for live beer radio that brings expert brewers together with, well, expert drinkers. This is the radio program with a head on it. This is The Session. I have the distinct feeling that we're turning into a bunch of pussies in our old age. (laughs) Is what's going on around here. What do you mean? Well, we're what? uh, Two days into San Francisco Beer Week, and... uh, it's a room full of hangovers, as far as I can tell. <laughs> Either that, or it's just my hangover exuding yeah, no, over no, from this side of the table to the other. No, directions. it's just you. It's just yeah, you. I don't have a hangover. I feel great. Ah, Tasty came in here all grumpy. It's three days in a row. Looking yeah. like shit. No. All, uh, I am in I am shit. Two standards. Really? <laughs> yeah, me and Tasty? Those are the two standards? No, grumpy and looking like shit. Oh, I see. No, I didn't mean that. <laughs> hey, I'm not denying it. I, I, yeah. I feel this side the same way. Thank you. At least one of you is man enough to, right. uh, yeah. to say it. That Chad over there, he's been hurting just as much as the rest of us. Oh, but, absolutely. Well, all the beers were like 10%. I mean, what are you going to drink? You know? See, went, that's the problem, man. Went to that, uh, what do they call it, double IPA <laughs> festival? Oh, that's right. <laughs> they slipped those triples in there, too. Do you know what I'm saying? Oh, it's a good time, though. And then that wasn't the worst part. It was, uh, it was Schumann's birthday party that sucked balls. That's yeah. what the, the, the fest was, was fine. We, we, we left, behaved ourselves. We actually. left there oh, really? feeling good. And then Shoe the Shithead has to have a karaoke party until 2 in the morning. And then we were all angry leaving. There was fights breaking out. <laughs> <laughs> I was ready to punch my girlfriend. It was mad. It was bad. <laughs> Dorian, there's this, so there's this guy who hangs out at EJ Fair. <laughs> I've known him for a long time. Yeah. He's got a glass eye, just to. Just to help describe the kid. Funny looking guy. I thought it was just a floater. I didn't know it was actually glass. It's glass. Should have popped it out for him. He's got a fucked up glass <laughs> eye. This kid gets drunk and he just gets angry about stupid things. Well, yeah, because he has a glass eye. <laughs> so I used piss to piss anybody off. I used to play guitar with this kid. Not in a band or anything. Just, we were around in the music circles together. He starts yelling at me about at the end of the night about how I quit playing guitar. Why, why did you quit? I can't believe you quit. Why? Why well, I, I quit because I sucked, man. I was a real bad guitar player. You didn't suck. You broke up the band. He's angry. He's ready to fight me. And uh, then he goes and pushes some girl. He really was. You know, you had left and you were just kind of doing your own thing. You're trying to cash out. And he was sure. sitting there muttering to himself. But he was, he's, I'm going to sock every person here. I don't care. I'll fucking sock them. Guitar quitters. What the hell are you talking about, dude? Oh, man. So Schumann did everybody in. And then today, I don't know. I haven't even had a beer yet. A rough day. Super Bowl day, too. Get it going. 
So to celebrate the Super Bowl, we brought in the Brits today. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> They're going to be handicapping the game. So yeah. right, we've got more beer company from the UK with us. You can't you can't sue them for that, JP, because they spell no, it differently. They do spell it differently. Yeah. Do, but we really, really appreciate you advertising here. It does us a world of good. Likewise. I think the intro to the show, the, today's show, is brought to you by uh, more beer. They bought the hand. The well, show, the, you just have to make it a longer O yeah. when you say it. Because it's not more brewing company, right? It's more beer company. More beer, because you've got to drink more beer. Yeah. It's really great. So Justin Hawk from uh, More Beer Company is with us today. Welcome to the studio. Thanks, Stoked. And you don't sound British. You're a Californian, right? Yeah, originally they keep uh, trying to change my accent, but uh, it's I, not working. You know what we call that in Pacheco? We call you a traitor. Oh! Pacheco, <laughs> head over there. You live there now, yeah. huh? I do, yeah. I've lived there for a while. Since, do you when, have a... since when is expat good? Huh? <laughs> no. Right. Patriot. You're over there giving away our beer secrets is yeah. what you're doing. That's... That's like a spy, if you ask me. Uh, no, I'm sure it's a bit of subversion. I'm actually trying to bring the American thing over to Britain. So. You are? I yeah. like that, actually. We're going to talk about that with Justin today. We're going to talk about real ale and, and cask uh, ale, and we're also going to talk about how you're infusing uh, what you know of American beer, because you started out here before over there, right? Absolutely. So we're going to talk about how you're doing all that. You can go to uh, morebeer.co.uk. <laughs> It's real this close, is a isn't it? It's M O O R. Yeah. Morebeer.co.uk. How come? How come you guys have a different? I don't understand why countries have a different ending to their their web addresses. Because uh, that, web, that way you can have like uh, you know the Brewing Network .co or the Brewing Network .ca for you know Canada. Right, but yeah. we don't have like the Brewing Network .us. It's just every, it's .com. Why no, can't well, that because the U.S. is that much cooler than every other country? <laughs> is that what it is? Yeah. All right, morebeer.co.uk, you can check it out and, and find out about the beers we're going to be talking about today, and we get to drink some of them today, because you brought us a couple. Oh, nice. Yeah, amazingly, we got through security, but yeah. uh, the weight restrictions now is terrible. <clears throat> it is, isn't it? No, we wanted to bring a lot more out, so we can thank all those uh, wonderful people doing those great things around the world for uh, <laughs> slowing the beer trade down. Yeah. I, underwear bomber. I brought back a <laughs> shitload of beer, uh, but I just got lucky, man. I just barely... They were worried about other things. They were worried about bombs in my underwear, so I was able to... Uh, <laughs> Drop a bomb? In my underwear. <laughs> what? Yeah, exactly. All right. Uh, so, uh, a couple different things going on today. Obviously, it's an early show for the Super Bowl, so we're going to celebrate with the Brits because none of us in here care about the Super Bowl. Uh, that's true. I discovered how un-American I am yesterday when I realized I didn't even know who was in the Super Bowl. Yesterday. Yesterday. See, I found out like a week or two. Well, it could have been two weeks. Probably like a week ago. I was like, oh, those guys. Eh. So the Giants Cold. and the Jets today. It's going to be a right. great game. <laughs> and the Niners. And the Niners. All three yeah. of them. It's going to be a tough match. <laughs> it's like a battle. See, that would be great. Like a like a battle, like SummerSlam. Yeah. You, you know, you get all the teams and it's just a, a tree of people. I agree. What? <laughs> I don't know what happened there. I don't know either. Thank you. So it was our- a WOW reference. <laughs> It's our annual Something. Before the Super Bowl show, uh, otherwise known as pregame. I guess you can call it that. Pregame. And uh, oh. even though I think, I think we I think we screwed up on our timing a little bit because uh, we said, oh yeah, we'll do pregame from two to four, not realizing that the game starts two thirty. <laughs> now we're right on time. Well, let's just say we did it on purpose, and our pregame is so good that it goes right into the first quarter. That's right. Yeah. You know. You guys don't care about that first quarter anyway. Don't worry, we'll let you go in time for the first good commercial break. That's our plan. Dude, you can watch all the commercials on Hulu anyway. Oh, yeah. 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 That's, that's right. True. So who cares about the friggin' Super Bowl? All right, so that's different. And then uh, Gabby is uh, your chat moderator today. Welcome to the studio, Gabby. Nice to have you here. Appreciate you filling in for the Beav. Nice to be here. And Beav does not have a good excuse. She just wanted to go to a Super Bowl party. What? It was kind of gay because I said I was late notice telling people that uh, you know it's our don't forget it's our early show. That's weird. So I kind of said, hey, yeah. So I kind of said, listen, if 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 I've screwed you up, if you've made other plans, then um, don't worry about it. I'll figure it out. Well, she said, well, I've got a Super Bowl party to go to. But if you think about that, she was going to be at the Super Bowl party during the normal show time, also, wasn't she? So I didn't really screw up her plans. No, not at all. So really, I kind of got duped on this whole thing. Yeah. So luckily, Gabby stepped in, and so you can hit the chat now button on the homepage, and she'll get your homebrewing questions over to me so we can ask Justin. There's two Justins in the room today. No. Keep that in mind. So, you know, I'll know. I'll assume that if it's a beer question, it's for Justin Hawk that's coming through. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I think I could just assume that. Yeah. Um, and everything else will go to JP. Oh. Uh, what? I think those are the only things that are different today. Phil's hanging out with us. Uh, Phil, the beer guy. That's all you need to know about Phil. Everyone just calls him by his first name. He's mm-hmm. a lot like Cher that way. And he travels <laughs> around with wonderful beer in his suitcase, and he's always sharing it with us. But I think Phil has tighter abs than Cher. <laughs> you think so? Yeah. I doubt it, man. 
You haven't seen him in that dress, though. <laughs> <laughs> now, Phil brought us... We're going to get to taste this on today's show. Okay. He brought us beer from right around when Jesus was here. Oh, really? Yeah. He has barley wine from like like 1 this, uh, BC, got, right? From <laughs> zero. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Hardy's from 87. He got a uh, Courage Imperial Stout from 85. See? 87 and 85. What'd I say? Jesus, right? Yeah. <laughs> and we're going to get to try this beer today. I'm excited about this. I did have... Once in my life, I had a... I think it was a, uh, is it J.W. Lee, is that another one? Mm-hmm. I think I had one of those from like 85 once, and what? I loved it. In hindsight, it really wasn't that great, but I loved the tasting, the character of it. It was real basementy and celery and, and figgy, and uh, like I said, in hindsight, it was just like real oxidized. The likelihood is it can be complete shit, but yeah. it'd just be nice to try beers that are that old. <laughs> Where the hell do you get beer this old, anyway? Uh, you buy them in 1985 and 1987. Is that when you bought <laughs> Did you buy these? Yeah. I, and they've my, been sitting... What were you, 12 back then? Mum and dad had a pub, okay. um, and we used to get that stuff for the case. That's how I got into beer. So it's been, got it. So. This Simple is great. <laughs> so I'm excited about that. We're going to try this today. And yeah. I don't see why you had to skimp and bring the little bottles, though. Motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll be trying some good beer with you today and talking about that and real ale and cask ale and American beer in the UK. We're doing the whole thing, so great. stick with us. I don't have many announcements for you, so that's good. We can get through this quick. Subscribe and join the BN Army by hitting the donate button. You can sign up for two bucks a month or as much as you want. And uh, it, it, it enters you into our, our monthly uh, more beer donation giveaway, which we're going to do twice this month to <laughs> make true. up to make up for last month. Well, as far as you guys know, we'll do it twice. That's right. <laughs> we don't really know. We're going to do two different raffles uh, this month. I think we'll do them. Uh, I don't know when. Now, is it morebeer.com? Or are you talking about morebeer.co.uk? That's sponsored dot by more be- M-O-R-E, morebeer.com, okay. right. the donation giveaway from them, right. not the morebeer.co.uk. <laughs> Just checking. Yeah. Uh, so subscribe and join the Army. It helps us out, and we'll try to give stuff to you. And also, you should buy Brew Your Own Magazine through us, because it's a great magazine, and you just click the pretty logo on our homepage. It says BYO, and you get a magazine, and we get half your money. So that's a real cool deal, if you ask me. <laughs> Us taking your money is yeah, cool. I like that. It helps yeah. us. And and they like to see people come from here. Uh, they say, oh, they came from the Brewing Network. We like you, and we'll take your money, too. And then they'll send you a really nice magazine. And Jamil writes for the magazine. That's right. He's their style editor, which is a lot of fun, I'm sure. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> It's fun. <laughs> It's just a good magazine all around. It is fun. All right, you can get all these updates on Twitter, uh, twitter.com slash brewing network. I sent one out today, as a matter of fact. Did you? I sent one out. What did it say? It said, uh, we're doing does a this, show today or something like that. Does this work? Yeah. Is, is anybody listening? <laughs> I was announcing that it's an early show. Oh, okay. <laughs> but I also did it yesterday, so if you're going to complain to me about how the web page was not updated on time, mm-hmm. then you can suck it, because if you had signed up for Twitter, you would have known yesterday that the show's early yeah. today. Yeah. Which is plenty. Listen, if 24 hours isn't enough notice for you, then you have a very busy life. And yeah. I don't know what to do about that. Uh, also, you can get these updates on Facebook. Mm-hmm. All right. Send uh, show ideas to Chad. Uh, Chad, the producer, C H A D Chad at thebrewingnetwork.com. He loves your ideas. He reads every one of them. He loves them. Right, Chad? That's right. Keep them keep coming. He, he actually wallpapers them. his walls with the best of them. <laughs> I do. <Pretty> all- <laughs> they go in the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> they all go on the fridge. Our fridge has two ideas on it. That's how many good ideas come through from you guys. Uh, but in all seriousness, uh, we do like to hear your show ideas because we've been doing this for a long time and, uh, well, we're fresh out of them. So if you come up with good stuff that you want to hear us talk about and guests that you want to see in here, then please send them over to chad at thebrewingnetwork.com. Send your feedback to feedback at thebrewingnetwork.com. Send everything else over to JP because he has nothing else to do but read your emails. I would like to read your emails, please. <laughs> exactly. All right, Chad, do you have announcements today? I do. All right, Chad's announcements are brought to you by a brand new sponsor. We have a lot of new sponsors this week. We do. Yeah. Well, right. we had. A, did you hear our new sponsor last week? Nope. It was uh, some like naughty lingerie oh, site. Oh, yes. <laughs> did you hear that spot? Let's, we like that. Um, let me play a little bit of it. Yeah. Playful Evenings. Just play the whole thing. Playful Evenings. The only thing I don't like about this spot is that it has dudes in it. Yeah. What's up, dude? By the long face. Dude, I don't know what I'm going to do for Valentine's Day. Last year, the World of Warcraft subscription was a strike. Who? Yeah, That was you. a dig at you. A couple of years ago, the new Hoover I got my wife was a bomb, too. But last year, I found PlayfulEvenings.com. What? What's that? You know, Mrs. Badrock's store. It's awesome. Totally tasteful passion toys. Are you serious? Yeah. What's a passion? Anyway, you get the idea. So that's a new sponsor. <laughs> you know, listening to it, it does kind of sound like, you know, it's like, uh, oh, what am I going to do by myself? Oh, well, here's a passion toy for me to hang out and watch the Super Bowl with. Yeah, here's a flashlight yeah. to uh, <laughs> enjoy the game with. 
Do they sell fleshlights at playfulevenings.com? They com? fucking better. They should. That's I don't know. It'd be a good movie. Do they? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Apparently they do. They do. Oh. Yeah. How does Wood know? <laughs> I'm a bit worried. Call him Wood for nothing. <laughs> wood knows. <laughs> wood knows every fleshlight retailer in the U.S. As a matter of yeah. fact, he goes through that many. Yeah. Uh, well, that's not the sponsor who uh, who who is bringing you uh, Shat's announcements today. Brewforia is a new uh, 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 sponsor today, and you can go to Brewforia dot com. And I, I'm actually really excited about this sponsor because you can uh, you can buy beer from them. Uh, so, you know, we get a lot of complaints. We always have, uh, oh, your guests are great. You all sit around talking about this wonderful beer, and I never get to try it because it's not available in our area. But if you go to brewforia.com, uh, they're going to do their best to start getting the beers that our, guest, uh, our guests, uh, them, have. Yeah, make. that's a really good idea. <laughs> it's going to be a long fucking show, Justin. I'm going to tell you right now. <laughs> uh, so go to brewforia.com, and you can buy beer uh, from, uh, like, out of your area. In fact, I think they have Russian River there. Last I checked, they had a couple bottles of Temptation left, so you might want to check that. Brewforia.com. That's who Shat's announcements are uh, brought to you by. All right. Here you go, Shat. All right. Well, a few big competitions coming up. Uh, the 19th and 20th of February is Quaff's uh, America's Finest City Homebrew Competition. Uh, go to Quaff.org and check out all the uh, details there. Entries must be received by the 13th, which is this week, so get them in. And uh, the following... Uh, Competition is on the 20th and 21st, which is the homebrew at the WEB. That's uh, Cass River Homebrewers Club out of Mid Michigan. Uh, you can go to Cass River Homebrewers and check out all the details there. Um, also, World Cup of Beer coming up. This is a big one. Oh. Uh, Bam puts it on in Oakland yeah. um, at Trumer. Great spot. Um, it's going to be April 3rd, but entries will be due March 13th. Peanuts are included with your entry. That's right. <laughs> oh, don't do that. No, oh, that's man. the worst. I think I have some beer to enter. In <laughs> but the uh, the window opens up the nineteenth of February and it closes the thirteenth of March. So make sure you get them in. Um, Puget Sound Pro Am coming up for GABF. Uh, you can basically get a beer in with a pro brewer. Uh, go to bewbc dot org uh, slash pro am for all the details there. Entries are due April twentieth, so you got some time. Um, what else is going on here? we got the AHA rally coming up on the 28th at St. Arnold Brewing. Uh, go out, support the AHA, uh, drink some good beers, probably meet a lot of cool homebrewers as well. And uh, no such thing. <laughs> probably. We, we don't know. You will. Uh, and then SF Beer Week, of course, is going on right now. We're kind of just getting into it. Um, we, you know, Tacey and I went up and had the Younger on Friday to kick things off. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on, though. I mean, double IPA was yesterday. Uh, it's Sour Fest at Triple Rock tomorrow. Yeah. All kinds of good stuff going on. Is Home there brew. anything else on that SF Beer Week that you want to mention, Chad? Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe you'd like to bring it up. <laughs> yeah. You're I'm sorry. I forgot. Uh, who's doing the anu- who's announcements Justin's are Justin's going to be uh, doing a, uh, moderating a tech talk. Two tech different two tech panels. Talks, two panels. <laughs> one on Tuesday, one on Wednesday. Remember the Dan was in here talking about oh, yeah. and I didn't know if I was uh, the, I am the moderator of that panel. I'm going to look very smart up there talking about technical brewing and then there's a history of, <laughs> of of brewing thing the next day. Oh, cool. They're going to be wonderful. They're and at the San Francisco Marriott. But the Marriott. Okay. Yeah. Cool. You Can you it. still get tickets and stuff or is it free? I'm sure it... that they're very close to sold out, <laughs> but there might be a ticket or two left. Yes. Gotcha. Yeah. And then of course we'll be at the Celebrator uh, Beer News Anniversary Party on the 14th, I believe. Valentine's Day. That's yeah. na- um, are you Pick busy up on single uh, girls? JP? Well, uh, uh, <laughs> WoW is having like a, some in-game event, but it's I could, a Valentine's Day special. I could probably skip it yeah. on your server. Yeah, I could probably skip it. You think so? Eh. We'll see. Maybe I'll log in early. Do what you can, JP. We are going to be broadcasting live from the uh, Best of the West. It's at uh, Trumer. Trumer, yep. This year. It's not at the Marriott. So I wonder if I'm going to be able to get internet then because it's at a real place and not at some stupid-ass hotel that charges you a million dollars a day to, to use what the whole world has, which is the fucking internet. Um, the but I think that Trumer probably, maybe I can just kind of... Yeah, they probably lynch you. So we might actually be live live, not just fake live. I don't like fake live. I hate mm-hmm. fake live. And if you miss us of Beer Week, Sacramento Beer Week is the 22nd to the 28th of February. <laughs> yeah. SacramentoBeerWeek.com. We're going to have Pacheco Beer Week uh, in <laughs> March. Not? It's yeah. all It all happens on a Monday. At the California Grand. At the California Grand <laughs> Casino. <laughs> Pacheco Beer Week, all in one day yeah. at the casino. And with a wrap-up party at the bowling alley across the street. <laughs> That's right. That's where the Two after party. Two lanes open. <laughs> after parties at the Paddock Bowl. Yeah. It will be Rockin' Bowl, not just regular bowling. Oh. We'll turn on the black lights. Ooh. Oh. That's how Pacheco Beer Week rolls. Why are they black? Why does everybody have a beer week? I don't get it. 
I mean, because you can. It's the new thing now, man. I'm not going to make it through this one. I'm going to. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to the Sour Beer Fest at Triple Rock tomorrow. Yes, I'll be there. That's the event of the year, if you ask me. Roger does a great job bringing in sour beer from all over the place. And I'm going to go to my events because I have to. Let's right. face it. And then uh, that's it. I'll fill in. I, I, I will. I'll host one for you. You will. Yeah. Which one do you want to do? Whatever one you don't want to do. <laughs> So you'll do both. Yeah. No, I'm excited about them. I can come and introduce you. Can you tell? Yeah. When's Tasty's event? You should have an event. <laughs> Nothing? He's saving it for Pacheco uh, Beer Week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah Chad. He's I going. need a real big attraction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Chad, thank you. Chad's announcements brought to you by Brewforia.com. Go check it out. Buy some beer. When, they, uh, when you can't get it, they can. How about that? Okay. Uh, feedback. Let me do that. I'll tell you who it's brought to you by later. How about that? I don't want to do it right now. Oh, my okay. God. You've got mail. Kick ass. All right. Ben Ronk wrote in about the Vinny show. Said he was listening. I was just listening to the archive and heard you and Vinny complaining about brewers posting dumb stuff on Twitter. Like dropping a deuce. It's true. People do that. Yep. Just post dumb things. Anybody follow JP's Twitter? Anybody ever follow that? At Mike's oh. Jip. <laughs> yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, see, sure. Phil does. What is your twit? Major Jip with two Ps. What do you twit about? I don't know. Um, the things that I do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm eating breakfast yeah. by no, myself. I don't do that all, uh, all nonsense, but... Um, all right. Yeah. Okay. I don't know how to answer you. Well, uh, Ben says, I think the BN needs a very special Twitter account, the Pooper Scooper. Make the account open to the whole BN army and charge everyone to post every time they take the Browns to the Super Bowl. You can call it the Twitter Bowl. Set a target number of posts and agree to do something cool for the army if they meet it. What do you think? Good idea? Nope. Me neither. Well, I'd read it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Got to fill time. So, But thanks of- for the idea. It was a lot of thought and I appreciate it. <laughs> right. So a lot of feedback coming through about the Winterfest, but the only criticism I've been getting is about our staff. Can you believe that? Well, <laughs> turn yourself on over there, Chad. Yeah, you're used to it. Hello. <laughs> so <laughs> apparently some some guy wrote to me that he saw somebody in full uh, BN attire at the ticket booth after we were sold out. Like we had said, we can't sell any more tickets because if we do, you're not going to get beer. Like I don't want to sell you a, a cup and sure. have nothing in it. Some guy in full BN attire was like black marketing tickets. He was like, I can't officially sell you anything, but let me go back in there and look around for some tickets and I'll see what I could do. Goddamn tasty. That was one thing. That That was a Yeah, tasty. What are you doing? (laughs) And the other comments I've been getting is I've been getting photos sent to me of my staff like chugging. Like I have a photo of Bevo behind the merch booth. Not working, but slamming a beer while, <laughs> while all the other staff is around here going like you could just see it on their faces chug 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 <laughs> this is what my staff does <laughs> at my event now I'm not surprised and uh, quite frankly I'm proud of you all everybody did a great job <laughs> good. and uh, wait whoever ca- whoever was trying to cash in on the black market tickets good for you uh, the, at the pay scale around here I expect nothing less <laughs> so you have no idea who it was <laughs> I, didn't, I don't no. know it's he probably didn't, Doc shit it was probably me <laughs> yeah, right. he was like I don't I think I was maybe the only one at the ticket booth in full BN attire I've never made it to the ticket booth so <laughs> anyway I appreciate the telling me but that just makes me proud of my boys and girl drinking on the job all right hey guys just finished listening to the podcast of the recent Vinny show and just had to drop you line to say thanks for an amazing show the guy's a legend the amount of beer information imparted was mind-blowing one to go back to again again uh we only see russian river uh very rarely down here in new zealand but uh they're much in demand i managed to get my hands on a three-week-old bottle of pliny and it was amazing uh so keep uh, keep up the good job doing a great job cheers and beers from martin thank you brother uh, Jay, I was just listening to the archive of the Dan Gordon show, and I have to say, you guys were on fire. Love the Dan versus the vegetable bit. Does anybody remember that? Dan versus the vegetable? Yeah, I don't know. Sitting here at work and almost spit water out all over my computer. Sounds like a porn clip or something. <clears throat> yeah. Maybe not eating vegetables? Was that the discussion? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, oh, I think we did say that he was, <laughs> we were going to make him eat vegetables for a week or something, yeah. and how irritable uh-huh. he would be. Uh, All right, another guy writing about the Brian Hunt show. He's catching up with the archives. He says, I think Brian Hunt got cut short um, when he went into super mega whispery creepy mode about Paxton's (laughs) pigs. Uh, He was highlighting the amazing flavor that results from Paxton feeding his pig beer, cooking them in the same beer, and finally serving them with said beer. 
But he says where I think Brian was headed was to the next level. What it should have been was one, Pax feeds the pig beer. Two, Pax cooks the pig in beer. Three, Pax eats the pig along with the same beer. Then four, Brian cooks Paxton in said beer. Brian eats him alongside the same beer. And if there's anything left, it could be distilled down to Paxton flavor crystals for future use. <laughs> Mm. That sounds tasty. He's thinking like Paxton. Yep. And Brian. And Brian. Same time. He's thinking like the What if these crystals evolved in yeah. Northern California? And he says, great job with the fest. <laughs> uh, my lady and I made it up from L.A. and came, so thank you for that. And they did marathon sessions at the Alembic, Magnolia, and Toronado the following day. Oh, two out of three. Yeah. And Good that, job. Jeez. That was from Porn Stash. Uh-huh. I wish you had a porn stash, JP. I wish I had a porn. <laughs> That'd be great. All right, that's it. We're going to take a break. Uh, that was your feedback for today. I'll tell you what's brought to you by when we come back. And uh, in the meantime, hang in there. It's our pregame Super Bowl thing with the British thing that we do here in Pacheco today. We've got more beer company in with us. Justin's out here all the way from the U.K. He didn't come for SF Beer Week. He came for this show right here. Which, is, right. which is really great of you. I appreciate <laughs> but that. But I'll probably go to SF Beer Week also. Yeah. Just saying. <laughs> Must have had a lot of extra miles. All right, uh, hang in there. It's the session. We'll be right back. Listening to the Brewcasters. Brewcasters on the Brewing Network. Hey, Push, the new brewery's looking good. Thanks, Finn. Piece by piece. Well, let's fire her up. Whoa! Is that a new kettle? Yeah, just got it brand new, but paid half price. What? And that blade scale? 40% off. And the new tap handle? Five bucks instead of 13. Got a new regulator for the brew stand, too, but five bucks instead of 25. Dude, where are you stealing all this stuff from? Where else? The more beer deal of the day. Announcing the Beer, Beer, and More Beer Deal of the Day. Every day, a new fantastic deal from big items to small that will blow you away. Boil kettles, carboy carriers, sterile siphon starters, digital timers. Watch morebeer.com every day for a new deal, and you just might find the item you've been waiting for at a price you cannot believe. Hurry, because stock is limited on most items. And that sweet Guinness cap, let me guess. The The More Beer beer Deal deal of the day. Day. Yeah, I knew it. Come on, let's brew something. Find the More Beer Deal of the Day at morebeer.com. Celebrity voices impersonated. Hey, BNers, Brewcaster Jay here. Are you tired of hearing about great beer here in the brewing network that you can't get at your local bottle shop? Well, we do interviews from all over the world, and we want to taste those beers, too. Finally, there's a place to turn for great beers from the other coast and beyond. Brewforia.com. Brewforia has an incredible selection of amazing beer, and they're adding more all the time. From breweries big and small, craft beer, imported beer, organic, and even gluten-free, you're going to love all the choices. When the brewcasters can't find an upcoming guest beer, we turn to Brewforia, and you should too. Just check the Brewing Network for the upcoming guest schedule and head to Brewforia.com for their beer. The great guys at Brewforia will even include free beer for you with qualifying orders. Free beer, BN Army. You know we like that. Visit our favorite online bottle shop today at B-R-E-W-F-O-R-I-A.com. That's Brewforia.com. Brewforia. When you can't get it, they can. What's up, dude? Why the long face? Dude, I don't know what I'm going to do for Valentine's Day. Last year, the World of Warcraft subscription was a strikeout. Ooh. Yeah, I hear you. A couple of years ago, the new Hoover I got my wife was a bomb, too. But last year, I found PlayfulEvenings.com. What? What's that? You know, Mrs. Badrock's store. It's awesome. Totally tasteful passion toys. Are you serious? Yeah. What's a passion toy? You know, it's a... Um, Central aid in the bedroom. Ooh. All kinds of stuff. Massage oils, couples games, lingerie, and books. Books? Yeah. Where do you think Tickless Pickle came from? Yeah, boy. Seriously. Fun stuff, and Mrs. Badrock takes care of the BN Army with 10% off. Go to PlayfulEvenings.com and click on Shop Online now. Put BN Army in the coupon code. PlayfulEvenings.com. Thanks, Mrs. Badrock. You're a lifesaver. BN Army. It's Valentine's Day all year long at PlayfulEvenings.com. There's an app on the iPhone for just about everything, including beer, apps for finding a pint of beer, 
apps that look like you're drinking a pint of beer. And now there's an app for brewing a pint of beer. Introducing BrewPal, the most all-inclusive beer brewing app for professionals and hobbyists that fits in your pocket and goes wherever you do. Recipe formulation that can be imported and exported with a customizable database. Mash and sparge calculations, yeast pitching rates, carbonation tables, and more. Available right now for less coin than a pound of grain. See BrewPal in action at brewpal.info and download it for your iPhone at a special introductory price right now. BrewPal, all the brewing software you need right in your pocket. This is Sit down next to it, grab yourself a paper towel, and watch those yeast have sex. You're listening to the Brewing Network. back to the program. We're hanging out with more beer company, and uh, beers are now flowing. So all is right with the world. JP just took his annex. Uh, <laughs> I think everything's going to be fine. I'm at love with everyone. <laughs> at love. I'm at love times. All right, people were, ask, we're asking Gabby at the break what the Brewforia website is. It's B-R-E-W-F-O-R-I-A, Brewforia. Spell it like you're me. Which means you're not very good at those sorts of things. B R E W F O R I Brewforia dot com. And you know, there's something else I want to tell you about today, and that is uh, Beersmith. You know, uh, the brewing software topic has come up with us over the years, and we've never had either one of them in the studio. But I recently started using Beersmith, and I like it. So yeah, I want to great. talk to you a little bit about it. You can go to Beersmith dot com and check it out. You actually get a free 21 day trial version, um, and which is a sweet thing because, especially if you're cheap like me, you can just check it out, brew a couple batches with it, and then I think what you'll find is that it's pretty uh, irreplaceable, and you're going to want to buy it anyway. Uh, uh, so Beersmith.com to do that. There's video tutorials about how to use it. And this is one of the things that people have been asking us to do a show with either Beersmith or uh, the other program. I can't remember uh, what it's called right now. ProMash. Um, to uh, to do that so we can help people figure out how to use it. Well, Beersmith has video tutorials right there to check it out. So that was very helpful for me. I was able to just open up the program, uh, browse around a little bit, check out the video tutorials, and it actually uh, made it pretty easy. Uh, you can do uh, like your own shopping list with the program. You can... Uh, uh, one of the coolest things, something that I have trouble doing, is uh, converting recipes. And with this software, you can actually convert from all grain to extract like that. You just yep. you put in whatever the recipe is. It will do the conversion nice. for you, mm. which is kind of unique. And so, I, I mean, you might want to adjust it after that. If obviously, you should look at what these programs do for you. But I'm no Brian Hunt when it comes to programs. I do want the computer to tell me what kind of beer to make. And uh, in this case, Beersmith is uh, just really helpful to do it. So check out Beersmith.com. Uh, Chad's using it now, too. Yep. And um, I think there, there's a bunch of features that we can dial in our uh, equipment. our personal equipment. Yep. Uh, so I think we're just like getting to do that so that we can make it work for us in the right way. So. Sorting to find recipes is really easy. Um, I've you know just put in a bunch so far, and it's just really easy to list them out and find what you need. Do your inventory, you know, hops and what they cost, and input all that stuff. And they also have a great blog too. Um, if you go to their blog dot dot com, you can just you know everyone's kind of talking about what they're doing with the program, and it just gives you a lot of insight and kind of. Did they good write direction. about me in the blog yet? Not yet. Mm. Mm-hmm. We'll get on that right away. Maybe okay. not such a great blog. <laughs> yeah, this program's wonderful. <laughs> yeah. But until you see my mug on that blog, <laughs> no, that's cool. Uh, so you can get, I mean, communication and information through uh, huge, uh, these yeah. guys is, is fantastic. So you can get the answers that you need when you need them. So check it out, beersmith.com. All right. Uh, more Beer Company, sitting next to JP from More Beer. Well, when you say... <laughs> More beer. You have to you have to put it together because it's one word. More beer. Yeah, and you That's guys. That's the brewery. And you guys are more beer. We're more beer. Yeah. Technically, you're more flavor. No, we're more beer. <laughs> the brand that is sponsoring the show is more beer. I see. More flavor is just the man the behind the curtain. Yeah. No. <laughs> man behind the curtain. Is there a man behind the curtain at uh, More Beer Company, <laughs> Justin? He's very scary, so we don't bring him out very often. <laughs> now, is it your company, or you are the brewmaster? No, I own it. So, so say my wife and I own it, and uh, I'm the head brewer, and we've got uh, an assistant brewer called Uncle Fester. 
Really? <laughs> yeah. He comes out from under the mash tun at about 7 o'clock in the morning. We start warming things up, and uh, but it's just the three of us that run the whole company. Okay. And how long has this company been in existence? Well, it was founded originally in 96, and the reason it's called Moore Beer is because it's in what's called the Levels and Moore area in Somerset. So the Moors is basically a type of... Uh, type of area okay but it sounds great with drink more beer it does yeah it yeah. definitely works in your marketing campaign i'm sure yes we do like it we like to <laughs> piggyback off it as well and where can people get your beer uh, at the moment only in the uk but actually also in italy finland and denmark great so and is it all over States. the uk or just one region or we try and keep it pretty local um i try and go out about sort of an hour's direction uh from where i live but uh phil he gets the beer out across to the people in the U.K. Uh, in bottles, but pretty much in cask. We keep it local. We go through one wholesaler to try and go out to some of the different festivals. But, uh, okay, yeah, we believe in local. That's why we fly our hops over from America. All right. <laughs> <laughs> is, is that it, right? Is it big in Italy, like with the Moors? <laughs> yeah. Okay, sorry. Good effort, though, JP. That was he nice. laughed. Uh, yeah. Okay, the guest laughed. It was courtesy. Good. Was know. it courtesy? People test? can see it on the camera. We're very polite in England. <laughs> oh, okay. You can go to but Justin. You're an <laughs> you can go to justin.tv slash brewing network yeah. and see JP bombing all show long. <laughs> <laughs> Dropping bombs. In high definition. And you can see Gabby there taking your questions in the chat room. If you have questions for Justin or the More Beer Company, uh, just hit the chat now button, and uh, or you can call 888-401-BEER. I haven't trained you how to answer the phone, but it's pretty straightforward. This guy did. <laughs> oh, you did? Oh, yeah. Great. So you like, I, it rings, and you press answer, and you talk to him. Yep. It's cool. And then you say no, nobody likes your question, and hang up on him. We're high tech around here. We have telephones. <laughs> One line. Yeah. Um, how many barrels of beer are you brewing a year? So you're going to start asking me these things, and I'm going to have to convert. I did one conversion last night, and it really stretched my brain. So we're going to generally <laughs> yeah, try yeah. and talk in that kind of metric thing. But yeah, we, we, it's, we, we know hectoliters. Go ahead. Okay, excellent. Uh, well, by so, we, we mean Mike. <laughs> well, yeah. 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 We, we don't, don't know, know, know. Yeah. Well, no, we don't know anything. Already knows. Here, here's my rough ones. We do. We have right. a 10 UK barrel system, which is about right. 15 US barrels or 1,600 liters. Thanks for that. Okay. okay. And so, so then how many barrels do you think you brewed last year? We brewed. Um, you could do it in hectoliters. Yeah, if no, we brewed start, something like eight hundred and fifty, something like that. Okay, great. Mm-hmm. So you're able to really handcraft these beers, and you're not. Uh, it sounds like you really are distributing locally. And um, have you grown a lot since you? How long have you owned the company? Yeah, the company. I mean, it really started off. It was a great idea, and really, what it was was a great slogan with "Drink More Beer." But the guy who started it was, um, I think, with all the best intentions, uh, not cut out to be the cleanest brewer in the world. Ah, um, so the went through a bit of a bad patch and shut down for a while. And I had the opportunity to come down in 2006 and basically buy it and start it back up again. Okay, I'm um, not realizing some of the legacy that it had. So we were digging ourselves out of a hole for the last couple of years, but we're growing, doing really well now. Great. Yeah. So what happened? You're from California, is that right? And were yes, you I am. were you a brewer here? Uh, well, in my heart, I was a brewer since I was about five years old. But Got it. Uh, now I learned to brew in San Francisco. Um, we moved here after we left the army. Uh, we were living in Germany, ch- basically chasing beer all over the place and okay, getting paid. Um, we moved good. to San Francisco in the mid '90s and uh, hooked up with Steve and Eric at uh, San Francisco Brewcraft, who started Speakeasy. Yeah, and. Uh, much to their horror, they taught me how to brew. Okay. Um, the word anal came up more than a few times. In, in brewing, I hope. <laughs> well. Yeah, not, not in San Francisco. In contract negotiations. <laughs> yeah, I see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good. Um, so, and I was basically, got bit by the bug, as I think a lot of people do, um, had this crazy idea. You know, my mother said, you can do anything you want to do. Yeah. And I actually believed her. Wow. Um, <laughs> and uh, nearly took a job down in Burlingame Station, uh, being a system brewer down there. Okay. And the guy who was brewing down there at the time, he gave me the best advice and he said, Look, you know, you're making a good living doing what you're doing. Keep home brewing until you can afford to buy a brewery and then you start up and you can do your own thing. Okay. Um, so. That is good advice. He essentially was saying, You don't need to come work for me and make shit money. You can do this on your own. Yeah, he said, The job's yours. It's eight bucks an hour. But, you know, San Francisco in the 90s, you weren't going to live off eight bucks an hour. Yeah. So. Yeah. And the other thing is we loved living in Europe when we lived over there, and we wanted to go back. So, and I always loved it in England. I traveled there once when I was a child. Okay. Um, that was a funny story, but we'll skip that one for now. <laughs> um, so we moved over always with the intention of basically having a brewery. And I okay. always had a passion for real ale and the British beer styles. 
See, I think that's kind of ballsy to move. It's like bringing sand to the beach, right? It's a good beer country, England. Um, so to go there with your style of beer and, and, and what you knew from here, I think that's kind of a bold move. You weren't afraid that people weren't going to dig your beer? Not really. I think um, when I moved over there, I started to realize that the the diversity of beer was pretty well dead. So you could get some really nice Cascales, but they were all basically the same. Everyone was brewing the same. I've heard that. Yeah, 4.1% yeah. amber pretty flavorless yeah. liquid. Right. And I found like myself... beer. What? The? No, no, his beer is good. <laughs> he thinks oh. of that way. Hey, I'm paying attention. Oh. <laughs> Just checking. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that black IPA thing was nice. Thanks. That was a Schwartz beer, but... Uh, <laughs> But we call it a black IPA. Well, you know what I find it. I find interesting is like you just go over to England and you say, "Hey, I'm going to buy this brewery." Did you get a lot of funny looks? Did you talk to people first about where I should be or who you should be talking to, or was it just you went in and said, "Hey, I'm I'm here to buy this place or do my thing"? Or how did you do that? I basically was looking at every month. Um, I was a camera member since uh, yeah, since I moved there in '97. Really, yeah, um, was there about day four. We drew, sort of drove up to our cameras headquartered. What does that stand for for folks at home? Uh, it's the Campaign for Real Ale. Okay. Um, it's basically the beer organization there, a consumer beer organization, I should say. Okay. Um, you know, good. they've done a lot of good for the beer industry over there. To keep beer traditional and real, is that the deal? Like, so that you're not having, you know, fake adjunct uh, yeah. ridden beer, is that? Yeah, basically in the 70s, beer pretty well died over there. It was all fizzy keg stuff. Um, you could, really couldn't get proper hand-pulled beers, and all the breweries were closing. So the consumers, well, actually, sort of, started up this organization to uh to try and save it okay and made a big media thing about it it's a hundred thousand people now wow it. okay and they've actually it's one of the largest consumer organizations in the uk and they can go to the government and complain about something and the government has to respond in 90 days oh is that right yeah it, respond uh-huh. in what way so if they complain that a pub is not properly serving or something like that they have to respond to that well basically they've actually done one since they've become 100,000 people, they've done their first uh, their first super complaint, which was about the way that the... It sounds very British. It is, yes. <laughs> so we, they, we, they formed an orderly queue first. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right. Hey, but, to complain. No, they were complaining about uh, the fact that the big pub companies uh, were basically stifling uh, their, their tenants. So they're basically putting their own tenants out of business. You'd have to understand the industry, which is totally... Um, totally different, a very long topic, but basically okay. these companies will own 5,000, 10,000 pubs, and they will have someone lease the pub from them and force that landlord to buy the beer at an extremely inflated rate. Got it. Uh, so they're forcing the pubs out of business. They're not letting the small brewers in. Wow. Um, so basically this organization stood up and said to the government, this isn't right, you need to look into it. And of course the government looked into it and did nothing, but they were probably <laughs> going to complain again. <laughs> And this time, form a longer line. Yes. And be very curious about <laughs> super it. Super duper complaint. Yes. <laughs> yeah, dude. We're done with this super complaint. Gonna go big. It's time to step it up. <laughs> Time's a million. All right. Uh, so you're now a member of this organization, I assume. Are you a, you're a camera guy? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, I've been a member for what, 12, 13 years. Okay. So back to, to Chad's question. How did you find this brewery and, 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 and choose this location? To Was it just luck or? Uh they they send out a monthly sort of newsletter, and in the back of it, every once in a while, you see brewery up for sale. Okay. Uh, and we, so every month, I was sort of looking for things to come up, and I was debating where did I want to do it. Did I want to start up on my own? Did I want to micro a brew pub? Um, I decided I didn't want to do a brew pub, although actually it might suit me a bit better um, in terms of the experimentation that I like doing and bringing out the different beers. But yeah. uh, I didn't want to run the pub side of it. Foolishly, I thought I had to do everything. So I figured, well, I can do a micro, and I can be a control freak and do it all myself. Right. Um, and this might basically this brewery came up. It's in a lovely part of the country. Uh, it had one, it had won one major award. So I thought, well, it must be a good brewery. It must have a good decent, reputation. Right? Yeah, yeah. Till I moved down there and found out that actually they were basically brewing vinegar, uh, and no one would touch it. Did you find that out uh, firsthand by tasting bad stuff yourself, or just were people saying, "Oh yeah, don't buy beer from that place"? Uh, no, I found well, they'd been shut down. They hadn't sort of brewed for a couple of years. They were kind of contract brewing so they could keep their own brand okay. going. But the guy was really running sort of a beer wholesale more than a more than the brewery. Okay. And it wasn't until I started brewing my beer and going out and going into the pubs and the people wouldn't buy it, locals wouldn't drink it. it. Took a long time to sort of turn it around and get them to realize that uh, you know things are totally different now. And, yeah. And 
basically people said what I should have done was change the name. Oh yeah, but it was a bit late then. And yeah, I, I and guess we love so. drink more beer, so it's okay. <laughs> yeah, that works. That was how did you do that? That's a tough thing to overcome. I, I don't think I would I would have changed the name. I don't think I would have uh, tried that. Yeah, it was just sheer persistence. I think you yeah. just kept putting good beer out there. That's it. We won a lot of awards. Um, actually, Phil told me last week. I think we're won what two of the top. 20 rated beers in the uk for 2009 on rate beer wow nice um, work cool yeah we were in the seat uh, the national finals for i think tri- putting triple j out was a big 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 difference for you because that really did capture a lot of press a lot of news i mean it was a yeah it's a big brassy hoppy ale which is unusual so it's, it's is a... this the ipa that we have right here in front of us yep. why don't we crack this open chad yeah, sounds good. Let's have some uh, more beer IPA. I mean, so you guys have heard when you've had like Brewdog on here. You, we've got you know you've had Kelly on. Um, we've got a new craft brewing scene that's looking to the US. It's looking to Denmark. It's looking to the relationships that they built. Like, yeah, you know, access to the you know the internet. Um, you guys and- have internet now. Yeah. What? Well, actually, we just got electricity in Somerset. Okay. Oh, yeah. Actually, let's, let's not start on the internet just yet. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it, this thing is and. There's people, there's consumers out there who want these flavors. And when a brewer steps up and goes, yeah, I'm going to brew this. So the, his brand became more well-known outside of his own area. Okay. And then flip backwards, back toward him. And, you know, it's it's a highly desirable. So uh, what style of beer would you say you're, you're doing? Do you call it English ale or, or what do you call it? Uh, well, basically to... Uh, I try and infuse the american innovation in craft brewing and the i would call flavor forward beers into a british cascale tradition in a belgian farmhouse brewery okay okay it sounds a bit funky but actually it works really well all right um so i do everything from a 3.8 percent american style pale ale i usually have about five to ten different beers going at any one time and they go all the way up to well in the bottle we call it nine and a half percent yeah um I call it an imperial pale ale. Phil and I will have a bit of a disagreement over this one. Um, I would call it. I'm I'm pretty sold on imperial pale ale. I think it's got that character to it. It's definitely it's it's strong. It's got a little bite to it. Hmm. It has a great malt character. That's the difference. Going to the the double IPA festival yesterday because I wanted that really big American hop character, but there needs to be some sort of balancing element to it. Um, I think all of my beers I try and basically have to be big in flavor, but big in hop character as well as malt character. Yeah. Um, so this one was kind of a fusion of an American style. It's all American yeast, American hops, um, pretty much what I would call an American style recipe. Yeah. Um, but in that kind of balancing, not restrained, but uh, you know, balanced yeah. British tradition. And at 9.5%, it's a great breakfast beer for me. It's my first of the day, and I'm going to be feeling <laughs> fine uh, when I'm done with this glass, I'm sure. It'll keep you going. But it was a great um, you know, it was a great thing, and it came about as a bit of a fluke, because I, was into, I walked into a pub that's about uh, 10 miles down the road from me. I walked into it, and they had beers from all over the world, uh, which you really don't see. They had bottled beers. They had uh, keg beers, Anchor on Draft. It was just fantastic. And I said, this is the kind of place for me. Yeah. And my wife would love it, because they looked like they had some great food. So I basically went in there, made a reservation so we can go have some dinner a couple weeks later, and I started uh, talking to some guy named James, who's sitting to my left right here. Got it. Hello. Hey, yeah. James. Welcome to the studio. Thank you. All right. And there was another guy named Josh, and basically we were talking, and we were lamenting the fact that you couldn't get a proper hoppy IPA in the UK, because uh, you just couldn't. Okay. So I said, well, why don't you guys come down? We'll brew something for fun. You know, I'll be able to get rid of one batch of it, and, you know, we'll have a good time. And they came down, and basically, we just we brewed this beer. It um, it was so hoppy, it broke the, broke my pump. We literally took like three and a half hours to run the damn thing off. Is that right? Um, so how many pounds of hops are we talking? It was 14 kilos for nine barrel. And how many IBUs are you saying this beer is? Uh, it's about mid-80s. Okay, nice. What was the starting gravity? Uh, it was 10, sort of high, between 1085, 1090. Nice. And it actually attenuates down. So the AB, the ABV level, we have a little bit of leeway in the UK. Um, for beers above 5.5%, you got a 1% leeway. So I certainly know at the start this uh, this beer has sort of popped over kind of 10%. So how much are guys like James, if you guys sat down and started saying, hey, we're bummed that we can't find a good IPA, how much are you the exception to the rule, or are there a lot of you looking for um, like real IPAs in the UK? It's starting to. Be, it's definitely starting to become more yeah. um, slowly. 
Okay. Um, certainly there's a much younger crowd, a bit like over here, you know, really uh, asking for more. Certainly I think Phil will know as well from, from what people are ordering off his website. Yeah. Um, there is more of a demand for American beer, certainly, because you guys have really led the way in terms of aggressiveness. Because we're uh, awesome. I, are, I mean, are. let's face it. <laughs> are you watching the Super Bowl today? That's how awesome we are. We have a Super Bowl. It's a, it's the, it's providing people with an experience, and I don't want to sound like it's marketing and business bullshit and all that, but it's there's very few British breweries out there that will provide those big, bright, brassy products. Right. And there are guys, James, Josh, another friend of ours is in town, Mark, um, and we've come over to experience these flavors. We don't, as you say, we you know, JP's, yeah, I hear this. <laughs> I had uh, Jay Brooks hanging out in England not too long ago, you know, a couple of years ago with me. And you, you, how do you turn there into these guys? You, you, you're coming from an amazing beer culture here. You're coming to London, which is one of the most fantastic cities in the world. By the way, you can only get like 20% of the beer in London that's of 80% that's produced out there. It's, it's nothing. Yeah, it's, I thought, it's, I got to admit, I, I thought London was shit, and yeah. especially for beer. Yeah, it's one. Food it, was worse. There's odd places that are amazing. But then you got to be honest. I mean, we've got to blow some smoke up James's. But he he works in the best pub in the country, hands down. Okay, phenomenal food, phenomenal beer. But it's three and a half hours drive from London. It's I see. ways down south. Okay. Um, and this is the thing, and this has the really frustrating part with England. It's very hard to get hold of these beer yeah. flavors that we can come to the Bay Area and enjoy. You know, it's yeah, and that's why when J- Triple J came out, yeah. Wait, that's the IPA we're drinking, yep. folks at home. Yeah, that's where James, Josh, and Justin. Um, this one, J. Oh, wrong one. The um, <laughs> the one that says like triple J on it. Oh, I had the, to turn um, it around. That's why it got so much plaudit when it first hit the street. Okay. And it, but it's so hard. You, you actually to get it on cask in England is you'd have to travel all the way down there and probably bump into it in James's pub. It's a great beer. It is. But part of what brewers like Justin have against them is is the UK drinking culture anyway. Um, we're very much steeped in that sort of 38 to 4.3%. Yeah. JP Sometimes. likes that. He See, likes a good session. I like it, but but that's the kind of duality, I think, right here. Is, but it's, is, the, it's the session beer mentality. You don't have it. Yeah, it's you finished work. It's go and drink, you know, down five pints and have a chat and socialize. That's great. Yeah. yeah. But it's kind of holding the, the actual perception of beer to most people. You know, they, they're not educated on You don't beer. move on from you know, there's the You know, you guys, all, all you guys I've been speaking to for the past few days over here, you know, know much more than pretty much every person in the UK about beer. Wow! Um, in two sentences, I could probably Look tell that, that for most, mo- you know, most even people. you, even that's amazing. Um, yeah. So to to sell that's something like this, or to sell, you know, we we sell um, Justin's three point eight pale ale now, which is you know quite assertive in flavour. Mm-hmm. Um, to sell that, you really need to sell it. You need to really push it, and you need to work hard to sell it. Yeah. Now people love it. Okay, but you have to work very hard to get to that stage. See, that's what I mean, and I'm glad you're doing it. It's like any place where you're, you're, you know, the U.S. wasn't always as as rich as we are in beer now. You know, we had to do the same thing. So I'm glad that there are people like you doing yes. it. I just wouldn't have been the one. To, I think it's I think it's a ballsy move. It's yeah. hard work. Yeah, no, no, I don't want to do. Why I don't want. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I, I wish that was I wish that was happening. You know, in the states where we've always had these, you know, six to eight percent beers right uh, the pub we were hanging out last night there was nothing under five percent nothing under six percent probably and it it drives me up the wall it makes for sure night, doesn't it yeah it does i mm. want a three and a half four percent beer four and a half maybe five tops and that's what i want because i want a session beer i want to be able to sit back and have a few pints and maybe throw a pint glass at someone's head if i want to if you i want, want to. to do that yeah. um oh, but we don't, we don't condone that in england that's a big no no right? you're going to plastic glasses yeah, now. No, right. yeah. <laughs> they've been oh, trying no, actually no, no, no. quick aside they've been trying that for years it's oh, not okay. I see. <laughs> but uh so it, it's it's a really interesting switch i mean you know england's looking at the u.s where the u.s was looking at england to bring these styles over and now they're yeah. kind of doing the old flip flop. But, but it doesn't have to necessarily be big i mean this this beer has um uh, a big reputation behind it. It's been the finalist for two years running for the uh, the, the Brewers Association National Awards. Hmm. Um, it was a finalist for Champion Winter Beer Britain this year. So it's 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 a fantastic beer. It's not showing well tonight because it bounced up and down for three miles as we walked up and down the hills in San Francisco this morning. <laughs> but it's you know it's it's showing okay. Yeah. Um, but I agree with the session ability, and that is one thing that does seem to be missing. And again, that it's what I'm trying to do is fuse the American and the British. And you guys do need something that's you know, you need a session beer, and I came in every place I've been, and the beers start at six percent up. You, there's a lot to be said for having a three point eight, a four point, a four point three percent beer. Fun. We but call you it have to have flavor. Light. 
No, 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 no. <laughs> you, can, you can have a flavor forward beer. My 3.8%, I think you would say it would drink, it probably drinks like a 5, 5.5% beer. Great. But you've got to have the flavor to back it up. And yeah. that's what was missing before in the UK. So if we can, if we can balance out the American flavor forward approach with the British session, Just then that, that's what we're trying to do. Okay. Yeah. I that's like the, this idea. That's the thing is you get, I can leave here, get back to England. One of the first things I gag, you know, I really want a nice pint of mild. Yeah, you, it, it, but you guys, it's a three point five percent. Yeah, what the hell? Yeah, but it, seriously, three or four pints of mild. It's, you finish your day's work, three or four pints of that. You go home and you're still lucid and sensible. You know, it, it, it's it's hydration, but it's flavour, etc. It does, and it's you know, bitter American at twenty one A has been kind of toward that. Mm-hmm. And, but it's you know, it's, but that's one beer in how many breweries in this town? Yeah, exactly. Know? That's so. my go to beer. The two and A's. It's, it's a, a great American, beer because I like mm-hmm. that. But so I mean, you described this uh, triple J IPA in the bottle. Uh, said you wanted the richness of a barley wine and the hops of a true IPA. And when I read I, that, I think is what it has. Yeah, it, I think you really you <laughs> nailed it with that. It does oh, have nice. a barley wine character. Mm-hmm. Uh, in fact, uh, are you going to be here for Barley Wine Fest next Saturday? Absolutely. I think you'll find uh, a lot of similar beers, at least in theory, uh, with this one, where they really went for the same thing, and and they're, they're just kind of really hoppy barley wines, which is yeah, I, I would I'd call it. Uh, you should enter this in uh, to the Barley Wine Festival. <laughs> Why might, not? You I might do well. Yeah, I bet you it'd, it'd kill at least three fourths of the barley wines there. Yeah, I bet you do at real least. well. What else can you tell me about this beer? Can we get kind of the malt bill and the hops that you put in it? I think our, our brewers at home would want to hear that. Yeah, um, I didn't bring it down here uh, specifically, but basically it's got, a, as you would imagine, a major sort of proportion of the uh, the grist is pale. One thing I did at the brewery as well, it's another crazy thing, because um, I like to brew big beers. I got a double-sized mash ton, so although... My system, from the copper down to the fermenter, is a 10 UK barrel system. I have a 20 UK barrel mash ton. Okay. Which means I can do a full malt um, grist and not have to put any sugars in or boost it up or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, it also means that half the time, or most of the time we're brewing, the mash ton's half full. And that's not the most efficient thing to do in the world for heat loss and whatnot. But uh, yeah. but it works for what we wanted. So it's mostly pale. Um, I've got some lager malt in there. I've got some Munich, I've got some wheat, and some crystal. So roughly, percentage-wise, when you say mostly pale, you're talking 90%, and then you're filling out the other 10% with these others, or...? Yeah, I'd say more probably like 85, 85 to 90. Okay. Yeah, I don't have the percentages in front of me exactly No worries, right yeah, now. just even roughly, just curious about it, so... Yeah, but I'm happy to, you know sort that out from a homebrew perspective and, cool. and try and come back and Justin's do that. Justin's got a really good malt just down the road from him, it's, um... Yeah, we're one of the. Um, I get all my malt from a place called Tucker's Maltings, or one of the last true floor maltings in the UK. Great, um, which is actually something for a good word to get out there. The the brewers and the Brewers Association, um, we get together in the southwest, which covers a sort of Cornwall, Devon, Somerset, Wiltshire, um, and Dorset. There's about seventy to eighty brewers, and we run a beer festival every April in the maltings. We literally they stop using one of their floors. Okay. And it's uh, runs from a Thursday through the Saturday. I think it's the twenty second to the twenty fourth or something, and it's run by or set up by the brewers, and we each get to put up to six of our beers in there. Um, Triple J's won its category for the last two years and was um, was the overall runner up. Um, but we got sort of three hundred and fifty beers there this year, cask beers in a historic floor malting. So if anyone's going to be over in the UK, that's like a must go to event. It's one of the top beer festivals in the UK. Sounds great. It's fantastic. Let's go. Yeah, I'm in for that. You guys should broadcast a show from there. Seriously. Oh boy. Next uh, next year, I, let's do it. I didn't say I want to work, Justin. I said I want to go. I'll go. I'll broadcast. <laughs> yeah. How well, great would to, that be? <laughs> you need to do a bit of re- come come out first, spec it out, and see how it's going to work. So come out there this year go. for it, <laughs> and right. then you can broadcast next year. No, let's do. I'm not doing anything. Well, the, queen, the Queen's arms around the corner. You know, it's a good. Yeah. yeah let's do it. <laughs> uh, when is this festival? I, it's the last. Uh, it's something like the 22nd to the 24th of April. It's a Thursday through the Saturday. Okay. Uh, but go on to uh, go on to either SIBA, which is S-I-B-A dot co dot U-K, and it'll have it. Maybe we'll uh, we'll take the BN jet. Let's do it. And, which is uh, the Shadillac, basically, on a barge. But <laughs> Your yeah. arms are going to be really tired at the end. <laughs> yeah, exactly. From all the ski polling, what? <laughs> so... I, I I like that you're. I mean, you're truly sourcing local ingredients. If it's if your maltster is actually right next to you there, that's, <laughs> right down that's the road. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's about an hour and a half down the road. Um, they still do it all by hand, and you go through and, and in the maltings itself, you can go around and tour it. And it's just like a it's a working museum. I mean, you go back, they still all of the stuff is. You look like you're going back 200 years. That's great. Um, so, and they got a nice bottle beer shop. And last year, I was getting. Uh, well, we bought out all of their torpedo IPA, and they get stuff from all over the world. That's oh, cool. great. 
Is the uh, barley locally grown, or is that uh, brought in most, to the most, most of the barley comes from Suffolk, doesn't it, really? Uh, no, no. We, oh, you I mean, got stuff locally. Yeah, no, we got stuff yeah. locally, too, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Um, so basically, the malt I get all is from Devon, but then this is another place that I deviate. Although I try and keep the beer as local as possible, I like the really flavor-forward beer, so I use hops from all over the world. I did that, um, uh, you did that Southern Star, didn't you? Yeah, I did a, a Southern Star, which was mm. inspired by an American home brewer. He was over. He got in touch with me. He said, I like your beer. Can I come down and check out the brewery? I said, yeah, come brew with us. Yeah. Um, so he came down and did a, a day of brewing with us, and he brought a few bottles of his home brew. And I opened this one. I was like, fuck me, this is, this is good. What is this? Great. And he said, this is uh, this new hop come out um, called Rewaka. I've from, never heard of it. From that. New Zealand. Okay. Actually, he's, he's actually pretty well known. He's uh, Casey Latelier. He's from Arkansas. He's, mm. um, he, he listens to the BN. I know he's acti- quite active on the BN out there. So. Cool. Yeah, thanks, thanks Casey. In mm. fact, we put, his, uh, we put a thank you to him up on the website. Okay. Um, for that. But th- this hop just totally blew me away. So I said, I got to get a hold of it. So I talked to the hop merchant. It took me over a year to get hold of the hop because they don't produce a lot of it and only, obviously, the seasonal aspect of it. Um, it takes a while. So I tracked it. They said, we're going to get it at the end of July. I tracked it all last year. I'm like, when's the boat coming in? It's going to come in around July 30th. Um, it was late coming in, came at the beginning of August, got hold of some of it, opened the bag up. And th- my brewery's really sort of long and narrow. And I opened the bag up at one complete end of the brewery, and my assistant brewer is at the other. And he could smell, as soon as I opened that bag, shit you not, he could smell wow. the hops at the other end of the brewery. It's like Chad walking in the room. <laughs> <laughs> That's fragrant. Yeah. <laughs> Rewaka or something, wasn't it? Yeah, it's Rewaka. So if you guys can get hold of Rewaka hops, and you're looking for a really massive kind of, I, I describe it as sort of gooseberry and sort of passion fruit, but... Okay. Uh, Have you heard of this, JP? Never heard of it. Tasty. Sounds like it's... No, good. I've never heard of uh, some of the New Zealand hops, but not this you, one. Yeah. You might, you, I think you guys are starting to get hold of Nelson Sovan and things like that, and Pacific that, Jam. Yeah, that, yeah Pacific yeah. Jam, yeah. yeah. Okay, all right. Rocket sounds like a Klingon curse word or something. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah. What's the hop bill like in this uh, Triple J? Yeah, so this is all American. Um, I must admit... You know, learning to brew here in the mid '90s, you just fell in love, or I fell in love with the, the classic three, the Chinook Centennial Cascade. Yeah. So we got four editions of it. Um, like I said, we're working at about sort of mid '80s, mid to high '80s IBUs. Um, Chinook for bittering. Uh, uh, the next edition is Centennial Cascade. Next edition, Centennial Cascade, and then we finish with all three. Okay. Um, like right. I say, it's quite soupy at the end. We we only use uh, whole hops. My system is. It's actually all old dairy equipment. There's no way we can cope with pellets, so just go right, right through. Oh, is that right? Yeah. It's lovely square copper. In your yeah. It's rectangular. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have the worst copper in the world. Really? But uh, but no, the beer that comes out on the other end is great. Mm-hmm. Uh, That's all that's that matters. All that, yeah. yeah. And Amer- uh, American yeast. What's, so, oh, Cal-Oil. yeah. Yeah, okay, like well. a callow, just nice, clean. Yeah, really, exactly. I mean, I'm interested in that. Why wouldn't you use an English yeast? That's that's a great character yeast. And I'm glad you brought that up because this is something I'm really passionate about. Um, American hops started coming over to the UK uh, four or five years ago. And before I, I had the brewery for a couple of years, I'd go to a beer festival and the brewer would describe their beer as hopped with Cascade. I'm like, oh great, I can't. I'm like, gotta get my fix. Yeah. And I go and taste it. I'm thinking. Uh, that, don't actually taste any cascade okay there was two problems one is level of intensity so the british beers historically have been quite restrained on their flavor and aroma hopping so one they weren't using enough um they, and then the second thing they were doing is they were using their traditional british ale yeast which give off a fruity character and the fruity estery character that you would get from a british yeast t- to my taste really clashes with the citrusy character that you get from the American hops. And so they were, one, not using enough, and two, putting something in there that muddled the whole thing up. Got it. Um, so, to, to me, Calais was the only way to go with it. I use British yeast for my British-inspired or more my, my more traditional okay. beers. All right. Um, but Calais for this and uh, uh, my other American beers. Yeah, we don't have the access as brewers in, uh, in England to... A massive diversity of, of, of yeast. I mean, White Labs, Y yeast. Was it? Was it? What's the other one? You guys got? You got um, Brewers something B B eight. No, what's it? No, I can't get them. Oh, here. Um, I can't get them in the UK. There's another commercial brewer supply. Anyway, yeah. But the, we we can't. We can get as home brewers a little bit of White Labs, a little bit of Y yeast. Yeah. But for commercial, we're pretty much limited to uh, the Lalamont. You know, the Fermentis mm-hmm. packets or Nottingham is another classic one. It's a horrible one. Windsor, isn't it? It's a mm. Um, but we, we're down to a portfolio of flavors of probably eight to ten. There's no Belgians on our, you know, it's cold yeast. What? 
um, yeah. you know, alt beer yeast, we'd have to go and specifically go and and Order find our it. own source. Interesting. That's not going to find a company. That's actually going to find a bucket of it. You know, right? So uh, that's when he, when Justin says, "Oh, I'm a farmhouse," but it's actually a little bit. It's that's that's the kind of a quite appropriate right. end of it. So okay. All right. Let me get us to a quick break. We'll come back. We'll talk more with Justin about the beer. We'll have some more beer, and we've got some of these uh, old beers to open up. So hang with us. It's the session. We'll be right back. You're listening to the Brewcasters on the Brewing Network. Do you support the Brewing Network? Do you brew your own? Are you looking for any economical, fun, and legal way to do both? Subscribe to Brew Your Own magazine and do just that. All year long, Brew Your Own will surprise you, entertain you, and educate you with articles on beer and brewing from authors like the Brewing Network's very own Jamel Zedeshaf and John Palmer. Each issue is a full pint of brewing techniques, homebrew stories, tips and photos, projects to make yourself, and recipes for the avid home brewer. Get your tough questions answered by Mr. Wizard. And polish your style accuracy with DeVille. A portion of every subscription goes to the Brewing Network, so subscribe today at byo.com slash brewing network, or just click the BYO logo on the Brewing Network homepage and support a fantastic hobby and your favorite broadcaster. Brew your own. The how-to homebrew beer magazine. Williams Brewing is your online resource for prompt delivery of quality home brewing supplies. Since 1979, Williams Brewing has offered the finest equipment and freshest ingredients and the best customer service in the business. Cut hours off your brewing sessions by using one of our 11 varieties of famous Williams malt extract. Our Williams Belgian Pale Extract is mashed with pure Belgian two-row malt and a small percentage of Belgian wheat malt for an authentic Belgian character you just can't get from other extracts. Or check out our unique fermenters, two-and-a-half-gallon kegs, paintball tank-based draft beer equipment, bottling aids, and much more. We even have our own line of precision hydrometers. Go to williamsbrewing.com to browse our vast selection. That's williamsbrewing.com. Orders placed by 3.30 p.m. Pacific time ship the same day. Brewing is easy. The Williams way. Nico, listen, our lawyer said that we had to do this for one hour, and after this we don't have to talk to each other for three more months to the the next meeting. Come on, let's get out of here. I'm supposed to have more lines. I'm the professional. Hey, it's Sully. And I'm Nico. And we opened the 21st Amendment 10 years ago at 563 2nd Street in San Francisco, just two blocks from Giants Park, to make great beer and have a great time doing it. That's right, because to us, the 21st Amendment is more than just the right to make beer. It's the right to experiment, to be innovative, and just do things differently. And so now, we're putting our craft beer in cans. That's right, cans. You can find our world-famous Heller High Watermelon Wheat Beer at Brew Free or Die IPA in the Northeast, Northwest, parts of the Midwest, and Alaska in cans and on draft. So next time you're at your local neighborhood pub or good beer store, be sure to ask for 21st Amendment in cans. Because everyone likes it in the can. Tasty Crack Cans. Tasty Crack Cans. When Blickman Engineering set out to design a great brewing stand, they knew it had to be strong, adaptable, and last for a lifetime. The top-tier brewing stand is now proudly available at BlickmanEngineering.com. It grows with your brewing skills and equipment. Start with 5-gallon coolers on its heavy-gauge stainless steel shelves. Then move all the way up to 30-gallon pots on the high-output burner tiers. Speaking of burners, the custom Blickman Engineering top-tier burners are extremely powerful, efficient, and amazingly quiet. They have safety stops to center your pot, and they'll last a lifetime and won't rust. The top-tier brewing stand allows virtually infinite combinations from traditional gravity systems to two tiers to completely horizontal. Configure your stand the way you want and have the freedom to change it at any time in the future. Your brewing stand should adapt with you, not force you to learn a new process. Visit BlickmanEngineering.com today to configure your top-tier brewing stand and to find a local Blickman retailer. You'll be surprised with all the flexible features and the competitive price. Start brewing with Blickman from the top tier. 
Hi, this is Push from the Brewing Network, and I want to tell you about the Brewmasters Warehouse and how you can get 10% off your next order. I'm a pretty techie guy, but I've never seen an online store like this. It's awesome. Go to brewmasterswarehouse.com and click on Brew Builder. You can whip up a custom recipe so easily even Sven could do it. Seriously, it's slick. You can share your recipe with your own logo and notes to the Brewmasters database if you want. And the best part, it keeps a running tally of the beer you're building while you're doing it. Then, bam, click Buy Recipe and your cart is filled and ready to go with helpful suggestions in case you forgot something. This thing is amazing. Brewmasters Warehouse is run the way a home brewer would do it with great service, fast turnaround, and six ninety nine flat rate shipping. Brewmasters Warehouse and the Brew Builder blew me away. Check it out today at brewmasterswarehouse.com. I'm serious. And don't forget to put BN Army in the discount code box for 10% off your order. Check out brewmasterswarehouse.com. Cheers. Hey, well, what's it feel like? Take awesome and multiply it by two. Yeah! <laughs> Spraying live beer radio all over your face. <laughs> Can't get any better than this, baby. <laughs> it's the Brewing Network. You're listening to the Brewing Network. Because like beer, radio shouldn't suck. Welcome back to the program, hanging out with more Beer Company and uh, Justin Hawks with us, along with James and Phil, the whole uh, British contingent hanging out on Super Bowl Sunday here. And, uh, it's been okay. called the British Invasion. That's the Is that, 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 that already happened. Now you're, you guys are like, you're slackers, man. <laughs> Just British hanging out, drinking our beer is what's going on. And speaking of drinking our beer, right now we have Andy Wood's beer in our glasses. And uh, Andy Wood was a bit of a rock star last night. A lot of fun hanging out with Andy. Oh yeah, I've uh, I've I've seen his gunt. <laughs> yeah, the old gunter. <laughs> now seen his gunt. He's a wonderful dancer, and I might add, karaoke star. Yes. Uh, but you brought us a really nice beer. What's this beer? Just grab a microphone real quick, just to tell us what we're drinking. I call this. Uh, it just came up. The name came to me. Uh, Imperial um, Pale Ale. Aha! Uh-huh. <laughs> um, I thought Originally, I, IPA was taken. <laughs> yeah, um, so I just added more more hops to an otherwise. You added more pale, pale ale, ale to it. That's um, Andy pushing the limits of homebrew. Yeah, right there. <laughs> That's what I like to do. I push the envelope. What do you guys think about this beer? I think it tastes like yeah. shit. Hoppy, good, right. very nice. <laughs> it is hoppy. What kind of hops are in it? Um, I think this one is uh, Columbus um, Centennial uh, Simcoe. I was, was going to say that. I was going to say all those. I was going to say <laughs> exactly what you were saying right now. <laughs> yeah. I think it's a great IPA. Yeah, that's a really nice, uh, yeah, nice. The, I, the IPA. The day was awful, though. Dropped a carboy and the power went out. Uh, did you and you, did you break the carboy? Broke the carboy. Caught no, yourself? Um, no. I, actually, I threw it at Kim. <laughs> if it's going to go down, you might as well throw it somewhere. Yeah, yeah, but it missed her and just broke on the ground. <laughs> Killed the dog. Switching <laughs> a better bottle. <laughs> Are you switching to better bottles now? I think so. A friend of mine uh, lent me his because we both brewed at the same time, and and you can't break those as easily. Yeah, um, and they won't kill you, and that's a plus. <laughs> those are pluses. Yeah. yeah. So those right. two together, it's a plus. All right. Yeah. Well, this beer came out nice, even though the brew day sucked. Brew day was awful, and the beer turned out nice, and it's gone. So this yeah. is the last bottle, but I'm glad you guys like it. What was oh, the uh, what was the OG on this Imperial um, Pale Ale? This one right around 1067. Okay. Uh, it went down to about. Ten fourteen or so. I was going to say that it's nice and dry. <laughs> Both of those things. <laughs> Low, uh, I lower about one fifty mash temp uh, to dry it out a little bit, and accentuate the hops, and uh, yeah, got some good uh, mojo in there too. You going to steal this one too, Justin? Take this back to the UK. <laughs> oh, I do like it. I've always wanted to. Uh, I've always wanted to do a sort of uh, what I'm going to call the trilogy. I want to do a, a California IPA next to an English IPA next to the Triple J. Ah, uh, yeah. That's a great idea. Mm. You could sell it as a three-pack. People could take it home, check it out themselves. So you had mentioned, and you and I talked about this a little bit, I wanted to ask you. We talked about this yesterday at the IPA Festival, mm. um, how uh, British beer festivals are very different um, in terms of tasting. 
Uh, explain that to me. What was so? Let me tell the folks at home who couldn't go. When you go to the IPA festival at the Bistro and many festivals, mm-hmm. uh, you buy a glass. It's a. It was a five. It was a five ounce glass, um, and and they would fill it up for you. It's like thirty five bucks, and you got some tickets, and you could do five ounce pours. And there were how many different IPAs were there? Uh, fifty five or something else. A lot of beer, <laughs> like, like fifty five. And so you could go through and and try a lot of different beer. Uh, but you were saying that's that's different in the UK. Uh, well, I think what's different about it, one major thing that's different is the size of the pour. Um, the, ta- the tasting sizes are great if you want to go around and try a million things, but yeah. uh, particularly from what I've heard of, the, of things like the GABF, where you get the sort of the one or the two ounce pours, right. you're not going to get enough flavor um, out of it to really to get it. Yeah. Um, in the UK, the, uh, the beer festivals now, you can get either a third, and the, again, the pints are different size. You can get sort of a six ounce pour, a 10 ounce pour, a 20 ounce pour. So you'll pay a nominal fee, if anything, to get into a beer festival. Mm-hmm. Um, the the sticker shock people, you know, British people would have not walked into the the bistro with the sticker shock to get in there. Really? Yeah. So um, thirty five bucks too much. You're uh, too, yeah, too much. You know, okay. two, two pounds up to five pounds maybe to get into a festival, and then you buy the beer as you go. Maybe you get a glass with it. Maybe you get a couple of tokens. Um, the other thing that's really nice, I think, in the UK, and this is a tip to anyone that's traveling out there, whether you're going to a pub or to a festival, is tastings. You can ask any any draft product. You can basically go up to in a pub or go to a festival, whatever. Say, can I have a taste of that, please? Mm-hmm. And they will basically, you know, give you a, give you a shot of the beer to taste. Right. There's a pro and a con that comes with that. One, you get to taste something, and you don't want to be a dick and ask to try like 50 things. Yeah. But um, unless it's served on gravity, and we can get into a whole gravity and cask and hand pumps and all that. But generally, if something's drawn up from a hand pump or served in some other way other than on gravity, you're only really tasting what is in the mm. cylinder in the hand pump or in the line. And so depending on how long ago it was that they poured something, you might be having something that if they don't clean their lines out in the morning or whatever, right. that was poured from like the night before, it's been sitting out warm in the pub all night. So then people will taste a beer, and they might get the wrong impression. They might think it's sour, it's awful, it's whatever. Actually, what it is is the landlord who was too lazy to go and do something about it. Yeah. But, the, but at least you've got the option to go out there and try it, which is great. And then you you'll get a, a sort of a glass and it'll have different lines on it and they'll fill up to the line so you can get a proper sort of six or ten or if you want to drink a whole pint uh, if you find a beer you like you know i don't want to have to be going back 15 times to to get two ounces up to or 10 times two ounces up to 20 yeah you know i might want to just session on that pint and enjoy it and it, and experience the beer over a period of time as it warms up in the glass as it degasses as my palate gets adjusted to it yeah so you're not just sort of running around with all these little short hits it's really a great point. I, I like the I've I've actually kind of admired the GABF because it's those one ounce pours and you get to try so many. But I think it's an excellent point that you make that you you barely get a feel for the beer at one ounce. I mean I I will I could do a one ounce taste that like in one gulp right and exactly. and just put it on the palate just be able to taste it. But it hasn't. Yeah, you really haven't gotten comfortable with with how it actually tastes. All that did is wash down the last thing you had. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a really good point. So it is nice to be able to try so many, but you're you're just barely scratching the surface of every beer at that point. Yes. So I do like the idea of being able to buy, say, a half pint. Like you said, you could get a half pour. So so the great British beer festival, which we kind of you know molded our festival after, in, in a sense, that's how it's poured. You you would go in and buy a six ounce or a, or a twelve or a twenty ounce pour. Exactly. That's you, how get you, choices, yep. you get choices. You get choices of glass. You get a stemware. You'll get a flute. You'll get the a standard British pint as well. So you you've got, you know, you well, how do you want to drink your beer and what volume do you want to drink it in? Yeah. It, that we we do do very well at that. You know, right. So. That's a really excellent point. And oh yeah, that's it, it, James. You probably off mic, but this, the the price of the beer is subsidised, especially at some of these camera events. So they're at slightly because there's a lot of volunteer staff, etc. Mm-hmm. The beer prices are slightly lower than mainstream. High street prices. Socialists. Fantastic, isn't it? That's and, great. Um, <laughs> so you go in, so it, as opposed to going to the pub, you could have a nice afternoon of, of tasting beer that, that which is cheaper because it's at a festival. It's not only cheaper. I mean, the whole thing on the time, uh, the time for going to a festival was, uh, that was a, a, probably another shocker. And actually, yesterday was fine at the bistro. It was great. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I was pretty surprised going into the uh, the opening gala sort of getting in there at 5 o'clock, and they were sort of Nazis on the door, not letting in sort of two minutes early. Yeah. And then they sort of kick you out, and halfway through the festival, the beers run out. I mean, that's 
that is uh, again something that probably wouldn't happen if you go to. You a would festival, very politely protest that in. Yes, we, in we, the we UK. might lodge a complaint. <laughs> yes, we yeah. Form the orderly queue first. <laughs> right. Form an orderly. Now you, you go to a festival. You want you're there to. Um, it, it, it comes back to the European perspective on going to pubs and, and things. It's a much slower, more relaxed pace. Yeah. You know, when I go to a pub or I go to a beer festival, I'm kind of there for Six, eight hours. Yeah. You know, wh- an extended period of time, and wow. you're not trying to neck the stuff down. Yeah. While you're there, you're there to enjoy it, to socialize, to experience things at a slow, relaxed pace. Yeah. Um, and that that's something that's um, that's different. Um, that's very different. The thing is, if you go like like Reading Beer Festival, it's just outside, not too far from Heathrow, as again, it's another accessible one, fantastic, right on the Thames. You know, it's in rural sort of uh, is it Bucks or Berkshire? Yeah. Um, fantastic spot. You know, three, four hundred different beers, three or four big tents right on the river. Yeah. Slow pace, sitting on the grass, sunshine. No, no nobody walking around. There's a security, obviously, but it's not heavy. There's no worries about police. You know, we can just sit. And There's chill no out. stabbings. God, definitely. No, nothing. No, they're probably the most chilled out. No uh, pushing in line and raging no. for the beer. And, no. <laughs> no, there were some cue jumpers yesterday. I almost said something. You did? Yeah. I almost <laughs> yeah. lodged a complaint. <laughs> they don't know how to do an orderly cue. <laughs> no, they sure didn't. <laughs> well, and I will yeah. say that that is different. You know, sometimes I'll leave our festivals and, and, and be in Winterfest, certainly no exception. In fact, probably the rule, I feel like I've been to a mosh pit after yeah. going to our festivals. It's, it's, they are not the, bar, the barley wine's a car wash compared to... it's it's. It's mental, you know, the one at Toronado. Yeah. But there's nothing like we don't. We, I mean, I've missed one. My favorite one in, in the UK is Dover. And that's always on the first weekend of this. So I, it's kind of annoying. It's like five minutes walk from my house. Oh, yeah. Um, and it's the, inverted commas, the extreme beer fest of, of England. And that's actually the first place I bumped into Justin's beer. And that's actually prompted us. And that's how we became friends. I actually rang him up and said, oh, by the way, nice Great beer, beer, dude. Yeah. Um, and that's, again, but it's all the beers are 5% and above. And we've got this big issue at the moment. Uh, actually, James from uh, Brewdog, is, he's quite hot on it. Um, this anti-social drinking thing. And this is a beer festival specializing in, in delivering beers at 5% and above. above yeah, yeah. Right the way up to J.W. Lee's Harvest. Things like that, 11 12% beers. But there's no aggro. It's people sitting there, chilling out in an, uh, a medieval building. You know, 80, 90 different beers. Everything's rocket fuel. Yeah. There's no issues. No well, that doesn't sound like any fun to me. I like that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I like that an extreme beer well, festival starts at five percent. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, that's Each true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, the pubs. I mean, the pubs won't touch. When I go into a pub to sell a beer, and that—that's the other thing that's completely different is the sort of this three-tier system that's over here. Just does my head in. Um, but when I go into a pub, or I'm talking to a landlord who, who's used to my beer, what do they care about? They care about sort of what color is it? If it's other than amber. Mm, I'm not so sure I can sell something that's gold or dark. Is it outside of the sort of 3.8 to 4.5%? Mm-hmm. If it's over 4.5%, it's probably too strong. And what's the price? And they're still looking for those sort of thirst, you know, slaking, bland, cheap beer to put down people's necks. And there are not a lot of good pubs like James's um, where you can go and sell a proper beer. So something like Triple J. Yeah. You know, that there's a sort of to the pub, there's a limited market that I can go out because people drive to pubs or they're going to sit and they're going to drink five pints of it. I know one guy who drinks a gallon of that a day. A gallon of Triple J yes. a day. Cheers to you, Lyndon. You he's, keep us in business. He's in good shape, this guy. <laughs> he's he's a legend. But the, the, the really ironic thing is, down where he is, there's a big cider drinking culture, and they do drink beers, or ciders, 6 7%. But yet they look at a beer and they say it's four percent and above. It's oh my god, right? And, they, and yet they drink rock, cider, cider that you can take paint off walls with. Sure, know? it's a lot of tradition in your beer. You see what I mean? Like people's habits, and uh, you know, if that's what it's almost arbitrary. Like you're saying, if they'll drink a, a kind of a, a six or seven percent cider without thought, but a beer that that's crazy, it's sort of arbitrary. They're really just thinking about traditionally a beer supposed. It's to the be same as you go to Cologne. 3%. You're not going to go and find IPAs on draft in Cologne. Yeah. Got a Dusseldorf. You're not going to find stuff. You, you no, there'd be a third world war before that would happen. I think. <laughs> yeah. So sure. it's we. It's good. There's positives and negatives between yeah. tradition and innovation. It's, well, I would like to go to one of these festivals. I would like to see that that difference. And I I actually really like the long festival kind of thing. That's why we did our our winter fest so long. But I'll say <laughs> the way. But the way that we do them. It's tough to do it. I mean, ours was seven hours. Right, it's like one to eight. We started running out of beer around six. Um, so, but it was so fast paced, and 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 the and people just 
clamoring for beer that it ends up being too long a day. But I could see myself at a at a seven hour festival if I'm relaxed and it's easy to get a pint and I could grab a taste or a full pint, whatever I wanted to do. I'd like to check that out. You know, so. eleven twelve hours is generally the a festival, and it will go for X number of days. So wow. something like the Great British Beer Festival that starts on a Tuesday ends on a Saturday. Yeah, uh, I mean you're in there for a, a bit of a marathon. Right. Well, some of them have got camping. You I mean people go there for oh, three yeah. days? They you know take sleeping bag, tent. Pitch what, up. Wow. What is yeah. the makeup of the crowd? I mean, do you get a lot of homebrewers in that crowd? A lot of just beard level? That's uh, one of the things that's a lot better here. Um, they're young and sexy and interested here. <laughs> not, no, the, not, not, uh, not wanting to sort of stereotype, but... The, the, uh, the crowd is... Uh, you can talk about me like that. Too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the well, crowd, no one we're raging here. <laughs> Come on. The crowds are completely different. I mean, the homebrew scene's tiny, relatively, and it's, it's really frustrating, yeah. actually. The, 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 the homebrew scene has caused such a cultural shift here. Yeah, in the UK, you know, it's homebrew is still seen as, you know, well, we had a we have a chemist store called Boots, and they used to be able to go and buy these plastic, you know, basically really bad homebrew kits that you mm. put the sugar in and, and you know the prepackaged yeast and the the, the, the more extracts pre hopped, and people do it first time and they go Ugh, and it's, this doesn't taste like what I drink down the pub, so they don't do it again. Sure. And whereas you've got the likes of be honest jp and more beer and, and these guys you oof, what we're sitting here doing now yeah and the communication here is amazing for what you can key into some maybe, amazing knowledge maybe more beer and more beer should uh team up and offer uh, we'll homebrew supplies offer and, even more beer well, JP, <laughs> you, you guys can call it even more beer yeah. we, we have a global domination more plan more. going on here yeah. Yeah. Two, uh, two things i mean you got jp's i don't know if you're probably aware of them but hop and grape um, oh yeah, yeah. They're, they're quite good friends with the guys in More Beer. There's a there's a relationship across the Atlantic for in them. Fermatap dot com. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, <laughs> but going back to what Chad asked is um, the crowd is it, I'm sort of young. <laughs> and, I'm, and, I'm, and, and sexy. Let's. Yeah. Uh, and I'm 30, <laughs> yeah, I'm 33. I go to beer festivals and I'm the young end of the crowd. Yeah, yeah. James is. You know, old? Young, Are you saying James? James he's, he's a toddler. James, he still has to wear his yeah, diaper. He's 24, so. and we'd start drinking at 18. You guys start uh, drinking at twenty one. Wow! Well, so well, we have legally. entitlements. <laughs> we have entitlements to go to beer festivals a lot younger than. But yet the yeah. crowd is thirty five, forty plus. Tasty is eight times as old as James. Can I you, fit right in there. Can you believe? <laughs> that? Yeah, actually, Tasty would actually Tasty would be the the market audience. Is that what it is? Mm. So it's, I'm not it's not for flavorless beer. It's not right. You're not that part of the market audience. There's not that many young people at these festivals. That's what you're saying. It's, it's, getting it's better. starting to change a little bit. There's a few more. You know. University towns like Reading and things like that it has certainly become. Yeah, so basically, I don't want to go to anywhere but the university towns. And what's the ratio of good beer to crooked teeth in a at a festival <laughs> like uh, this? Uh, <laughs> I'm going to let James answer this one because I'll get in trouble. <laughs> well, for one, Sorry, you guys have don't. much cooler beards. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's a one to one ratio. Yeah, yes, yeah. we do. <laughs> so we say beards and bellies at, yeah. at beer festivals in the UK. Uh, sort of sandals and socks, that kind of thing. Yeah, okay. Um, sandals and socks. socks. Yeah. It's really, and really, yeah. 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 It doesn't really give beer a, a, a great image. To like yeah. dress socks, uh, probably, too. How yeah. many, yeah. How many people? So at the Great British Beer Festival, how many people oh, show up at that thousands. event? Thousands. It so is. 50, thousands, thousands, something like that? Yeah, it's yeah. Yeah. Thousands, sandals, and socks. <laughs> no, the, the, That's the, actually, mix. the Great British Beer Festival over the last... Say I think two or three years has certainly got a lot younger. Um, there's uh, actually a few girls who've who've been in the past couple of years. <laughs> We've had eight girls in the <laughs> last <laughs> ten years. Statistically significant. <laughs> <laughs> Gabby Gabby came with me to the gym. Nine yeah. girls yeah. in the last <laughs> yeah. ten years. Yeah, she was one year. Uh, yeah, she eight. was taken. <laughs> <laughs> right. Course. No, but I mean, it is, to be honest, it is changing. And you go out to these festivals, and the demographics are getting s- slightly younger. They're getting, I wouldn't quite call it balanced yet, but it is nice to see, um, you know, to see it changing. And, and actually, from a, a beer perspective, younger and younger people, not underage, but, you know, yeah. the, the average, what I would call cask beer drinker's age is decreasing because it was de- generally sort of like an old man's drink up until a little while ago. Interesting. And, and women are starting to get into it, and they're. Like in the blonde hoppy beers, or like in you know some of the dark heavy beers. So it's it's nice to see the change, but it's a lot slower. So would you well, say that your major competition then is not cask ale, but something more like alco pops or or mixed drinks or wine? I mean, is that the market that you are competing with? Yeah, for the younger crowd, I would guess. Right? Uh, younger crowd yeah. trying to get them off the alco pops and the sort of the the multi- vodka. The alternatives are yeah. a big issue. Yeah. 
there's intelligent young people and then there's fuckwits and yeah. fuckwits basically ruin it for everybody else which is why but we they have this usually whole... look a lot hotter than the yeah, intelligent true. young people let's face it <laughs> no not in the UK <laughs> oh is that right no no no, no, no. <laughs> intelligence <laughs> equals sexiness definitely. I see yeah. alright <laughs> as long as they're polite yeah, yeah. so it's, it's better to, to start it sounds like it's better to see start seeing um Tits that can actually give milk at festivals <laughs> instead of just like man tits. I see. Yeah, yeah you see what I'm saying. Then that would be good. It was a long way around, but it uh, was. And but again, though, I, I applaud your effort. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nice summary, there, mate. So is it, <laughs> appreciate it. But appreciate is it also it. is it the finished product, or are people pretty interested in the process? Like, do you get what are the questions you get at your pub? I mean, people coming in, are they more interested in the beer or actually what you're doing? And how it's coming to that's a good question. It, it, it's a great. I'll I'll take it from a brewer's perspective, and then we'll t- James will take it from a pub's perspective. I think the the level of interest is certainly increasing in the UK. They're interested in where it comes from, how local it is, how we do things. Um, I do my brewery tours a bit different than other breweries do because we really don't have anything to look at. So I just sort of talk at them for you know kind of an hour, hour and a <laughs> half, and I give them this like information download and try and talk to them about beer styles and you know clear beer versus cloudy beer and why that is and okay well, we can get onto that in a little bit yeah. um but th- the level of interest is definitely increasing and it's across all the ages and people who i thought you know i get people coming in in their 70s that i would expect to be really set in their ways and you see them try something like uh, like a triple j or a really hoppy beer or something that should really blow their mind and you think they're never going to like it and you sort of you can see in their face mm, it's different but yeah actually this is pretty good and mm. they get they start asking questions and same at the pub, you're getting a lot of questions about beer, yeah, or they I mean, just often, ordering often beer? it's questions about flavor. Um, certainly, beer styles are, are much more known than they used to be. Um, people know what a stout is. They know what an imperial stout is much more than they ever did. And okay. I mean, that's very recent. That's only the last couple of years, I think. Yeah. Um, but uh, people are definitely coming in. They want to know what it tastes like, um, especially where we are. We're in the middle of the countryside, so people have to drive to get there. So if people are going to be drinking then they're quite happy sometimes to, to drink stronger beers and just sit down and sip it, right. not necessarily drink the five pints or whatever. So, you know, people are trying more. They're but curious they? about the flavours. The technical questions, though, not really, because people aren't brewing. Okay. Um, so there's not really so much technical questions. They're interested in hops. People know the hop varieties a lot more now. Um, I think they the local thing is a big thing. People really like beer that comes from just down the road. Um, but beer and food are starting to become good as well. Okay. Um, but it's a bit, it's that kind of wine thing. They want to know what it tastes like, what it might go with, what it might do for them now. Okay. So, so they are nice. interested. They are interested, definitely. But do they know the difference between Oasis and the Beatles? Have they, yeah, have one's, they figured one's, that out yet? One's good and one's not. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Making sure. Because I see those full stadiums over there and I can't tell if they know the difference. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So is your beer all cask conditioned? Uh, Justin, or all of my beer is, um, I will call it vessel condition because actually I do it in three different formats. And again, that's something that's a bit different from other UK brewers. I don't. Th- there is a real prejudice against the word keg in the UK. Uh, but of course, coming from a background of you know growing up and learning to brew here and living in Germany and traveling all over you know Czech and Belgium and stuff, um, I'm not afraid of keg. It's a great. It's a great vessel, and in some beers, it suits it a lot better. Was it because of all that sort of yellow fizzy beer you talked about earlier? That, exactly. That's, so that's why people shun the keg. They, it, yes, and everything that it meant. But it also, in addition to the vessel, it meant sort of filtered and pasteurized and okay. gassy, and they're not using it, and too cold, and they're not used to that for, for a beer that they will actually want to taste. Got it. Um, but I do, I, you know, 99% of my beer is ca- it goes in cask and goes and served in the local pubs. Okay. I do a small amount of hand-bottled uh, beer. It's all bottle-conditioned, and I did my best to get... Um, I always love drinking out of bombers, so this is the closest I could come to a bomber-shaped and sized bottle. So we do all ours in a 660 mil, which is totally different to all the other UK brewers who do them 500 mil. Really? So you stick out on the shelf with this bottle? We do, uh, yeah. not only in the size and the shape of the bottle, but also our branding. Um, we just got uh, awarded in October the best uh, pump clips and bottle labels in the UK by the Brewers Association. So they're quite Great. um they're quite traditional looking yet they're a bit sort of modern and I wouldn't quite call it edgy, but they can appeal to old people and young people. Got it. They are really nice. They ha- you have it's a shield uh on this one, so it's got that traditional feel, but the font and the rest of the look of it it's pretty modern. I dig it. It's really nice looking stuff. Yeah, thanks. So what is the process for bottle conditioning? What do you do? Just throw some fermenting wort and 
kind of how do you bottle condition uh, again it's different to the way the other brewers do it over there um i don't know phil and i phil had a bit of a worry i think initially the way i was doing it but then i think um hopefully he's come he well i think the product speaks for itself so he's probably come around to my way of thinking but <laughs> i i'm one who going back to the sort of the anal thing i hate handling beer because i think every time you handle beer uh, along the process you've got a chance of oxidation or something going wrong with it sure. okay so my way of doing it is i i would not bottle the beer for the first couple of years i was brewing because i wanted to get a really good handle on how the beer and the yeast was going to perform consistently so i could predict these things because i didn't want bottle bombs and i didn't want sort yeah. of flat beer when you already had that bad rep your 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 brewery's name had that bad reputation exactly. you put out bottle bombs and you're done no no we and we couldn't have that yeah but um basically the way that i do it apart from the um the barrel aged beer which we can we can get onto a bit later but all the other stuff i take directly from the primary fermenter um into bottle and to do that and i don't reseed it and i don't prime it or anything it's uh you got to catch the beer at exactly the right time and that's one thing that i think uh, i hope i'm not sounding sort of t- too biased of everything in america is great and the brits don't know what they're doing because we can swing this conversation completely the other way, and I think there's a lot of things that we can bring over from the U.K. and uh, try and change perhaps the way that we're doing things over here. And How I think, dare you? <laughs> yeah. it's, it's all about this global culture. You can't say that on Super Bowl Sunday. Yeah. yeah. Tomorrow, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. tomorrow's great. But you, I mean, you, you guys, are, you're the masters of cask ale and, and, and in essence, cask conditioning. I mean, we, we, we learned that from you, so I and, think it's fair to say we could keep learning about that. It's it, it, well. So we. We're all. Yeah, we're, <laughs> and that's what we're saying. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're, it's all. We're all learning from each other, and that's a great thing. And if we can get more brewers, and when I mean brewers, I don't mean pro brewers. If we get home brewers, basically this, you know, this community. When I heard about this, and Phil told me about the BN, I was just totally blown away by what you guys are doing. And you're getting people all over the world talking about things in the right way. Everything from you know beer styles to process and getting. But doing it in a fun, enjoyable, accessible way, yeah, um, which is fantastic. And if we can do more of that, more of that collaboration, uh, then that's going to be good for both sides. Sure, really. Yep. But uh, but Cass- so, what tips would you give us for um, I, for how about bottle conditioning? Because you were about to say how careful you had to be with your bottle conditioning. Yeah, well, bottle conditioning is again it t- to me it comes down to handling. Um, I try and keep it what spotlessly clean, and I mean I. I the brewery is basically a barn. It used to be a goat dairy, and it's just literally sort of steel clad. And when it is cold outside, like it's you know sub freezing, we're brewing in sub freezing temperatures, and it ain't fun. Wow, yeah, um, that doesn't sound fun. No, no, it ain't. It, ain't, it hasn't been fun for the last couple of months. But you know, I was we, cold yesterday, and it was seventy. <laughs> I used to be like that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Now you can't be anymore. A couple of German winters will shock that out of you. Trust right, me. Right, right. Um, but yeah, to me, it's all about getting it in and getting it fresh, and that's what the cask conditioning is so good at, right? We don't, you don't go into some brewers do, but as a home brewer, I was always sort of under this impression that you had to go from a primary into a secondary, and then let everything completely finish, and then you're going to go and prime it in the keg or the bottle, mm-hmm. right? But basically, cask conditioned beer, for the most part, is all about going from that primary straight into the cask. Knowing when to put it in the cask and knowing how many points you want things to drop, you want to sort of, depending on how lively you want the beer, and this is my American bent coming out, which is I like my beer a bit gassier than the traditional um, British cask brewer. So I try and get somewhere between a kind of three to five point gravity point drop in the beer from the primary to when it's going to totally finish out in the cask. Okay. Okay, and what's, what happens then is basically you can we can drop down from the fermenter, which is... Uh, it's on a sort of a three meter high concrete platform that the goats used to walk up to get milked, but it's perfect for brewing um, cask ale because I can then basically hook up a hose to the fermenter, drop it straight into the casks. No pumps, no agitation, no aeration, oxidation gets in there. And if it, anything that's going to happen, the yeast is going to scrub it out anyway. So my beer will, will have, uh, not that I've measured it, but I would suspect my beer will have a higher yeast count than a lot of other brewers beer would have um, a lot of my other sort of colleagues um, and, a, and a, will have more condition yeah. but on the positive side the beer stays fresh incredibly long uh, the extra condition helps to vent out and pre- uh, prevent the ingress of the oxygen you know oxygen into the beer um, and keep it fresher and it keeps it livelier in the glass for a lot longer so the landlords will say to me um, 
your beer stays fresh longer than other brewers' beers do. But it's a bit more difficult to manage, so it takes them a little longer to vent the beer. It takes a little longer to drop right. This is you know, sort of a pro and a con, but it's an education process. And when they understand why we do it and what we do, then they, they get on board. But it's it's all about education sure, and getting the word and out. get in there. Are you, are you you're facing this, uh, that whole like uh, that you know, American coming in here trying to tell us how to do cask ales kind of nonsense? Or, uh... It's... Um, I had expected that, and I'll be honest, it's... Exactly what I expected. <laughs> it's it's kind of the, quite the opposite. Yeah, no, it's, it is the yeah. opposite. It's yeah. almost a novelty. Um, and especially, well, when, when my wife gets on the phone to do the call, she seems to get more sales than I do. And That's do weird. That. <laughs> That's weird. Yeah. I think uh, it's a good point that you bring up about, uh, you said, if anything, as you're, uh, as you're putting it right to the cask, uh, you aren't getting any uh, oxygen. But if you do, that the yeast scrubs it out. Yes. And maybe kind of an obvious point, but uh, bottle conditioning is kind of a, a, it seems to me, a superior way of packaging. We've been talking about packaging and shelf life on the show kind of a lot lately. The, t- the topic keeps coming up. And bottle conditioning, it's a great traditional way to, yeah. to, to scrub those problems, you know? I think one thing that that a lot of us, when we end up talking about it, uh, Jamil is, is definitely one of them on his show, where he he finds no, uh, he doesn't have any reason to, to cask condition or to bottle, to bottle condition, because he wants exact and precise control over his CO2 and the CO2 levels. And so to me, that makes a lot of sense. He gets a lot of control over it. But this makes a lot of sense in terms of shelf life and a, and a healthy beer and scrubbing out anything that might be left in that beer. I really like that idea. Are you able to... Really measure, yeah, I mean, closely uh, your 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 CO two levels by doing this. No, no. To be honest, not at all. Yeah, but, yeah. And, and it's. I won't say it's a complete irrelevance, but in some ways it is because when a cask is served, it's vented. Okay. Right. So any excess gas is going to disperse, and anything that would cause a problem in the line, let's say from a fobbing perspective, is vented before. Is, is vented out unless the landlord doesn't know what they're doing, and that can, you know that can happen sometimes. I had. Um, I had one pub, and they honestly they didn't know that you're supposed to vent. So, you know, they were wondering why they're blowing taps out of cast. Not only mine, but you know, what did they other... just move from California or something? Yeah. How do you not? How do you be in England and not know that? It, because <laughs> because a lot of landlords don't know how to look after beer. I see, uh, which is a sort of sad thing. Okay, and isn't in history, you know, in England, wasn't it the, the landlord or the pub owner that usually did care for the beer, like? You'd send them a cask, and they'd condition in their cellar, and then they'd serve it. Is that does that happen at all? Or is yeah, that... well, I mean that is that is what happens. But uh, just because you can buy beer and you have a hand pump and you can hook the two together doesn't mean that you know how to do. It. It's not rocket science. It's dead oh. easy, and it doesn't take long to to right. teach people and educate them. But it sometimes there are some really simple things like that. Yeah, this is funny. You took, took just going back. It's talking about the freshness of uh, um, Justin's product. Go past James. He's He's one of the few brew, uh, pubs out there that ages beers in his own cellar because mm-hmm. he's obviously working with Justin to, to figure it out. So, I mean, you had, what's it, a year old? So you're aging uh, them in your cellar to be able to yeah, try I mean, different <clears throat> ages? Like cast conditioning is, is you, yeah. you really need to do what, well, not always, but what's best for the, the particular style of beer that you have, the, the individual beer that you have in your hands. Um, you know, some, some beers you need, need to be served as fresh as possible. Really low gravity milds, things like that. Yeah. Part of the the beauty of them is that really gentle sweetness that you have to begin with. You leave it in your cellar for a couple of months, it's going to go dry and thin and it's not going to be very enjoyable. Right. So you need to know that. Um, there's no educational system. You know, there's nothing for landlords to, to learn this. Wow. Um, I learned it because I was interested in it. Um, mm-hmm. And there's very, very, very few people who, who I suppose, take do take time. the time and yeah. care to do it. Um, Adnams do uh, their barley wine called Tally Ho. We do we leave that in our cellar for a year, sort of get it in at Christmas, and then leave it till the next Christmas and serve it. Um, you know, you get start to get all these whiny notes coming out after time. Yeah, um, I'd like to try things some like, that. like that. And it's fun as well. Yeah, sure. You know, um, sometimes with you know with with beers like not necessarily Justin's, but with some beers that have quite a strong yeast profile, um, you need to be very careful about leaving them as well because you know things like Harvey's. Timothy Taylor's, you can, you know, their their yeasts are very, can be very strong. I mean, yeast harvest is, exactly. You leave that for too long, that just completely takes over the beer. So it needs to be served okay. fresh, but you also need it to be building up to that sort of carbonation level. Right. Um, that's sort of optimum for serving. Um, well, we've got a couple. That, Go ahead. Well, the other thing that would be useful is if, if brewers were to say, well, this is how it's meant to be done, <laughs> you know. 
Sure. You know, this Tell, is how when we, you drop off how, the beer, just this is uh, how we think. about two weeks it'll be ready. Include yeah. instructions. Yes. Mm, right. but, but the same thing exists over here, and we went to one of the ostensibly the highest rated uh, pubs in California. Um, California Grand? <laughs> no, I wasn't and, and they have they had a hand pump on, um, and basically we walked in there, and the, and the cask was sitting underneath a heated bar. Uh, the hand pump was literally sitting open, and I sort of s- leaned over to to James and said, "I really don't want to teach this guy how to suck eggs, but we, we should probably like say something." So I said to the guy, I "said Well, look, I don't mean to teach you how to do your job, but you've left the hand pump open. You should." should close it because you're letting all the gas out and all the bad things that are going to happen. Oxygen back in. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, he sort of, you know, nodded and smiled. He went over and he closed it halfway. Um, and this is supposed to be one of the best, you know, places to get beer in the world. Actually, one of the top, what, I think it was 20 rated. Great beer place, yeah. Yeah. Um, which was, you know, it's embarrassing for us to sort of have to say it. And, and it's sure. an education thing. So it doesn't just exist there. And I yeah. Think, it's no, everywhere. no, we see problems here all the time. And we've yeah. actually, we've had brewers come in and, and talk about their staff and problems. And uh, it's an ongoing process, I think, training everybody mm-hmm. all the way through it. And it's, it's from the time it leaves your brewery to the time it, it makes it into my glass. Uh, yeah. And there's always going to be somebody new or somebody who didn't pay attention or, right? So you do. But it is complicated. It's, and it's a shame because you're, you're working so hard on the beer. Yeah, and then a, a, a handle gets left open. You guys really do need more home brewers there. I think yeah. they would, yeah. we would, they would really help. They'd you They'd speak lot. up and, and they really would, say they that. would they would and yeah, they would be correcting these it's uh, quite pub owners. It's quite funny. So we had um, we were, we've been talking about this for quite a while. Is we've had a bit of a change in the guard of the communicators in in England. We've had a demise of a couple of magazines and things like that. It's a bit of a shame, um, but we've had a, a new young guard come through. Domination, you know, social media, Twitter, Facebook, yada sure. yada, access to sort of Blogspot and WordPress, and you know, Mark, who's out here traveling around, is unfortunately not here. But you know, twenty-four-year-old Rin's young beer writer of the year, first year of beer writing, effervescent, energetic, and he's picked up on that whole thing between you know youthful brewers looking to the world and bringing it yeah. through. And now we do need in the UK. I mean, I champion it big time on anything I can do with my capacity out there. Yeah, homebrew, 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 homebrew. Sure. You, you learn to appreciate beer and the people who are producing it. You, even if you're shit at brewing, you still figure out. Oh, that you reason that beer is that good because of. That. I can vouch for that. Hmm. That's right. Yeah, well, the more there are, the more <laughs> yeah, the more you are to get a good brewer coming out of the bunch. Yeah, hmm. same. There'll be good pub uh, owners as well. There's a whole bunch of right people that'll come out of that pool. Yeah. Well, I want to talk about this beer that we just poured, and we can kind of even go into fresh and and not fresh beer now because uh, Phil was kind enough to bring us these beers from Jesus. Um, <laughs> but before we get to that, we can talk. So we just poured this more uh, beer company uh, fusion. It's an old ale aged in Somerset cider brandy barrels. It's eight uh, percent, and it's fucking great. Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> it's well, a you. really nice. nice, nice beer. I was. I will say this before the show. Uh, you know, Justin handed me these beers, and I'm about to put them in the fridge. And all the Brits go, no, 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 no. Just, <laughs> just leave it on the counter, man. It's yeah. fine. And I'm holding the thing, and I'm going, yeah, it's yeah. it's fine on the counter. <laughs> it's blood temperature. What are you doing? All right, man. It's your beer. Yeah. Uh, but I'll tell you what. You're absolutely right. And I wouldn't. It, it's another thing that we could learn. Um, you know, you if you hand this beer to somebody in an American pub mm-hmm. at, at this temperature, we are going to look at you like you're nuts and ask you, please, you know, well, I'm not paying for that. Give me a chilled beer. But this temperature, I, in my opinion, is perfect. This mm-hmm. beer, it's open, it's warm, it's soft. It, yeah, it's revealing all its attributes. Yeah. This temperature. I mean, you got nothing to hide behind here on this. And no. I would, I'm glad you were here because I would have fucked this up if you left it. I would have put it in my in my cooler and we would have, Chad and I would have cracked it tonight all ice cold and would have missed out on, I don't know, 60% of this beer's profile. Yeah, you Absolutely. probably would have seen a lot of the roast come through, but but not a lot of that soft malt. Yeah. Mm. And, it's that, uh, that it's kind the of really nice sort of barrelly bits as well. Coming yeah, yeah, sherry notes. And yeah. Yeah. Mm. I love that, this That part would have been no, squashed. Well, what can you tell me about it? It's really amazing. Th- that was a real, um, that was a labor, when I, a real labor of love. Um, I, I wanted to do a barrel-aged beer, not because I wanted to jump on the bandwagon, but I thought we had something that would be unique and would be truly Somerset. Um, and I thought it would add to the beer. So we do our Old Ale, which is called Old Freddie Walker. It was champion winter beer of Britain a few years ago. It was the one, the one thing that... Uh, mistakenly had gotten right in the old brewery and, and we've i've had to tweak i've had to throw away all the old recipes 
got rid of some of the old brands and I've tweaked or completely rewritten um, or added my own brands for everything. So everything's pretty much a rewrite since I took over, which is a bit of a it's a bit of a concern when you go out and you look at things like rape beer and rape beer now. Okay, now I've got a couple of the, the top rated beers in the UK, but you look at the legacy that I'm now stuck with carrying around with me. It's on the internet from yeah. you know before my time, but that's a separate topic. Going back to fusion. <laughs> um this was a beer that I wanted to create because we've got a uh, cider brandy distiller just down the road from us, and they do some lovely products. It's very traditional, and when you guys come up, would love to take you there. We took uh, I took Mark Carpenter from Anchor uh, and his wife out there. It's just a beautiful spot. Again, it's a throwback, like you know they were still doing it that way like 600 years ago. It's That's amazing. Great. Um, went in there, and the the owner is a bit idiosyncratic, and I happen to know. Someone who's... And everyone knows everyone in Somerset. Okay. Uh, I think we're expanding the gene pool. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> moving down I wasn't going to make the joke. I'm glad you did. <laughs> yes. Um, anyway, but they, but they are lovely. They're fantastic people down there. Um, and we do love... We love living there. Um, but anyway, it was down there and originally came up with this idea that my old ale tastes to me like liquid Christmas pudding. Now, that won't make any sense to over here because we don't have christmas pudding but for christmas there is a, a kind of like a fruit cake a, a a spirit soaked fruit cake that's served across everyone's plate on, on christmas called christmas pudding okay um so imagine lots of raisins and sort of you know those vinous flavors in dried with some fruit dri- like. dried fruit and molasses and it's served with brandy butter on top it's lit um, as well in the it's, it's, it, yeah that's it's fantastic very i mean talk about Afterwards, you feel it, but it's like uh, a tasty way to get hammered. It's cooked for, <laughs> cooked for four hours in, in a in a, a muslin bag, and you steam it, and it's it's. So all the all the twelve year olds at Christmas are like, "Can I have extra brandy exactly. topping, oh, yeah, that's please?" The one. Yeah, that's the first education of drinking in the yeah, country. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. <laughs> so the uh, the old ale tastes like liquid Christmas pudding to me. Yeah, it's very vinous. It's rich. It's molassesy. Um, it's got a lot of treacle, and it's a great beer. And what do you put on Christmas pudding? You put brandy butter. And what do we have down the road from us? We've got a cider brandy distiller. Okay. So all of a sudden, one day, I said, well, this makes, it, this makes a lot of sense, because we do a porter that we add port wine in, uh, in the cask. And that's, you know, it's a great beer, and those flavors go really well together. Mm. And there was a beer festival coming up for, uh, for the Somerset Camera Group that they have about 110 beers, and they'd asked me for a special beer. Um and I, and I said, well, rather than put port, I'm going to take their brandy and I'm going to put it in a cask of my old ale. And we're going to just do one for fun. And we did it, and it was just, well, it was highly rated okay. by, by them. Yeah. Um, they really liked that the brandy flavors worked so well with the beer. And so when I started thinking about barrel aging, like, this is something we can do as a difference. I don't want to go and get, you know, a rum barrel from wherever and throw something in it. Let's keep it all local. And it, and, and it makes so much sense to do this beer together. So I approached the, the distiller. And at first he said, no. He really? Said, he said, grain, grain and fruit don't mix. And just no. <laughs> just no. Well, you you can't a have stupid a I- Thanks for the stupid <laughs> idea. Yeah, no. You, you American get back on your horse and yeah, yeah. You know, ride back across the ocean. Wow. Um, and fortunately, uh, I knew someone that works at the, uh, at the place. You and stole one. No, 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 we didn't steal <laughs> one. Fortunately, we, I broke a window that night. <laughs> <laughs> we... Uh, yeah, it took a good number of months, but ultimately warmed the guy up to the idea, and he said, yeah, "Okay, whatever. You know, we'll 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 think about doing some barrels." So all of a sudden, I got this call. There's two barrels available. Um, do you want to come have a look at them? And you can, you know, probably buy one of them. So I came down with the van, had a look at both of them. Um, he opened them up for me. One of them was was new limousine wood that it had five year old si- Somerset cider brandy uh, distilled uh, maturing in it. So it was all vanilla and fire and sort of brimstone coming out of that thing but it was lovely and re- very sort of appley and the other one was previously used for sherry and then used for a five-year-old somerset cider brandy and that one you just opened it you just got wow i mean sherry just came out and left out and i couldn't decide which one i was going to buy so mm-hmm. i took them both okay right so i get these things up and i've got these meter high um platforms in the brewery and we stuck the two barrels up there and they look like a giant set of <laughs> friends like yes. we, we like giant we yeah. like giant sets of friends all right yeah we, we set them up there and i got a tip from um well phil helped coach me through this process because it's the first thing i've done barrel aging uh we've got another uh friend eddie gad at ramsgate brewery who's a great brewer and, and made one of the best um barrel aged beers that i've had so i got in touch with uh, with him and asked him for some tips and the first tip he said he said there's going to be a ton of spirit um 
left in the bottom of it, you got to make sure you tip it out and save it for yourself because you're getting this cast drink stuff. Oh, yeah. And we literally, from between these two barrels, we got five liters of spirit out of them. So I have, like, cast strength brandy from the... Wow. From there. Because we didn't want to just sort of grog the thing. We wanted to get infused just the flavor. We didn't want to just spike it. Um, so we emptied that out first. Well, and grogging, I, grogging being illegal. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> got it. Okay. Okay. Um, so, so is this your, is the base of this, just so I'm, I'm following, is the base of this still the a porter? Or so, no? so it's my old, so basically what it's I your did, old ale. it's my old ale, Okay. and I brewed, uh, the, the difficult thing for us as well is the old ale, I only brew it a couple, you know, maybe twice a year, because the demand in the pubs is they can't sell a 7.3% old ale, so okay. there are very few that can, so we don't brew it a lot, so I had to basically program in a special brew to fill these two barrels up. And, again, coming back to my kind of anally crazy way about wanting to do things, I, the, the idea of kind of reseeding didn't sit very well with me. So I decided on croisoning the beer. But I didn't want to just croison They said, well, you can croison it with anything. Well, I didn't want to croison it with anything. I what does to, that mean, to croison the beer? To use um, freshly fermenting wort, like day-old wort that still has all the sugar and the yeast working around it mm-hmm. in to uh, to basically condition the beer. Okay, so you would put that into the barrel and, uh, with it, yeah. or into the cask with it a- a- after the barrel. Yeah. So basically, what we did is a very long day. So we had to brew. We brewed the first run of it that filled the barrels, and the aroma coming out of those two barrels was just absolutely unbelievable. I mean, imagine all those fruity, sort of caramelly, roasty type aromas coming out, mixing with all the spirit that was yeah. kind of... And I just stuck my head in between those two, and I was like, yes. <laughs> just stayed right there. You motorboated your own barrels. <laughs> <laughs> Send us a video of that next time. We'll post it somewhere. There, there was a mo- in fact, Phil's got a couple of photos. There's photographs around the web. You can, you can find them. Nice. From the waist up. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> hey, you also mentioned in your description treacle, and you kind of said it real quick. Yeah. Can you kind of just tell our audience, like, what, what is treacle, and why use it in old ale? You hear that a lot. Oh, I mean, what? Oh, it's uh, we we don't use it as a. It's not an ingredient. A treacle is uh, basically like a um, dark invert sugar. Yes, mm. um, but it's got a very. It's got obviously a very sweet flavor to it, but quite a sort of not quite roasted, but more like sort of caramelly toffee. Yeah, but yeah, slightly a bit, burnt. A bit like that Belgian dark candy sugar, but it's not. Um, but it's an invert, so it's it's not. I think it, 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 we use it as um, more as a sort of. It's a post-war thing. It's. Um, it's a sort of post processed sugar. It's it's not it's no, I don't like it, but it's uh, Is it's that big, something that's just readily available in the UK? Or oh, yeah, it's, it's like golden it's syrup treacle, it's one of those Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. It uh, goes in cakes and things like that, making gingerbread and things like that. So. I mean you could you could certainly use it to as part of the you know, the sort of the bill. We don't we don't use it, but that flavor can come out from, okay. from the grain the way that we make the beer, the combination of the malt bill and the yeast and the profile that it gets off of it. Okay. So it's uh, just a descriptor you were, Yeah, sorry. Okay, yes. gotcha. Yeah, no, it's not it's not included in there. There's gotcha. no su- no sugars in it. Okay. Um, but but basically to to condition this beer I decided on croisoning, which means I had to brew two batches of old ale, which I would maybe do in an entire year. I had to brew them within a sort of relatively short period of time. Um, and then what we did is we basically I was tasting the the barrels as we were going and because the barrels had such different origination the beer that was in them had those different flavors going and i couldn't decide which one i like better and and i like blending a lot and we had james there and we were basically tasting them and put them together and we're like that's the blend it's just fantastic um so then what i had to do was i had to brew the extra old ale i had to then blend the two barrels together yeah with the croisin and bottle it all in the same day Got it. Uh, so it was a rather long, long day and night, but we got it all done. So uh, the conditioning takes place because you added wort to which, this finished beer that exactly. you had blended, and then you bottled it then, and then it conditioned in in the bottle. Finished off. Yep. Such a great beer, man. Thanks. Yeah. It's I, awesome. I love this beer. Really good. Yeah. Um, the, the only not not that this is a plug for Phil, but I said to Phil, this this beer is pretty well. I was really happy with it when it came out, and I said. We only made 700 bottles of it. Most of it has already been kind of pre-ordered, which is another thing that does never ex- happens in the UK, pre-ordering a beer. Okay. And I said, please take a big bulk of it so that you'll have it available. And so Phil, basically, in the world, he's probably got nearly the only supply of fusion that's left now. Is that right? Oh. Well, thanks for sharing. Well, I mm-hmm. like you a little more than I liked you a minute ago, <laughs> No, Phil. you still hate me, though, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, this, this, it's, it's just a great beer. This is the whole... I mean, it's just... <laughs> This is the whole communication thing. I hang out here, great friends here. I mean, having Brindleson 
uh, this is where, to be honest, a lot of the stuff I've learned from uh, from Matt. I mean, we don't see each other too often, but we communicate. Uh, I've got a lot of time for Matt, and he was the one who sort of when when we were talking about doing barreling beers, we you know that's the knowledge I relied on transferred it to him. So again, it's another flow okay. of knowledge from yeah. from the West Coast. To, to Somerset, and this is how it was well, all it working. worked. Yeah. No, well, yeah. when I was doing it, I, I downloaded the Barrel Aging Show, and I listened to it intently, and what you guys were doing, right? I was taking oh, course, notes. Yeah. And, oh, so yeah. I made this beer, essentially. You, it was all <laughs> I am responsible yeah. for this beer. It's here, in all, I in love a, that. It's funny, in all due respect for you, if you go in Eddie's Brew at the moment, you go in there, and you walk it, and you hear your voices. It's fucking annoying. It really is. I can't get away from you guys. I walk into his place, and they got it. You're BN. It's like, oh, I've got to get in my car, and I'm driving across Europe. I've got iPod on. It's BN going on. There we are. It's great. <laughs> my kids don't like it, though. <laughs> JP, do you realize that it actually took me two hours today to take credit for everything? That's a new record. Usually, it I do record. it much sooner. That is true. Mm-hmm. But uh, today, and with respect to our foreign friends, I waited two hours to take credit for the well, whole thing. Well, you're a good guy that way. And uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, of course, you had Anthony's yeah. beer as well from bloody from Australia, didn't it? it came up via me to. Yeah, that's know, right. That sour. Yeah. <laughs> we get a lot of beer here from yeah. places that we will never go to. No, um, especially uh, JP. We'll especially never JP. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let me get us to break. I got to do this. We are running out of time. We're already over time, but that's okay. I'm really enjoying this, and I want to taste some more beer. We're going to try these older beers. We can talk about freshness, a little more uh, cask stuff. I see your questions in front of me. I'll get them answered when we come back. So hang in there. It's the session. Don't worry about the Super Bowl. It'll still be there when when you Wait, get what? back. Bye. You're listening to the Brewcasters. Brewcasters on the Brewing Network. Hey, Push, the new brewery's looking good. Thanks, Fen. Piece by piece. Well, let's fire her up. Whoa! Is that a new kettle? Yeah, just got it brand new, but paid half price. What? And that blade scale? 40% off. And the new tap handle? Five bucks instead of 13. Got a new regulator for the brew stand, too, but five bucks instead of 25. Dude, where are you stealing all this stuff from? Where else? The more beer deal of the day. Announcing the Beer, Beer, and More Beer Deal of the Day. Every day, a new fantastic deal from big items to small that will blow you away. Boil kettles, carboy carriers, sterile siphon starters, digital timers. Watch morebeer.com every day for a new deal, and you just might find the item you've been waiting for at a price you cannot believe. Hurry, because stock is limited on most items. And that sweet Guinness cap, let me guess. The The More Beer beer Deal deal of the day. Day. Yeah, I knew it. Come on, let's brew something. Find the More Beer Deal of the Day at morebeer.com. Celebrity voices impersonated. Hey, what are you doing, man? Writing a review of WLP 400. What? You're reviewing yeast? Yeah. White Labs has home brewer reviews of all their strains. Are you new to these interwebs? Check it out. That's awesome. White Labs, your source for great yeast, invites all brewers to visit whitelabs.com to read and write your own reviews of all their yeast strains. Get real-world tips and tricks from other brewers who have made the most of their vials and post your own experiences. It's another way White Labs brings you closer to the best yeast on the planet. And send. There you go. You misspelled flocculate, dude. What? Ah. Uh. Mother White Labs. It's all in the vial. Hi. I have a sixer of Lagunitas in the icebox. My roommate's gone for the weekend, and I'm wearing something flimsy. Listen, baby. I told her not to call me after eight. I'll talk to you tomorrow. I gotta go. Who is that? Your girlfriend? You loser. Shut up, thug. Did you guys get the cauldron set up on the altar of my art? Sir, if you weren't so busy getting booty calls, you know that. The hurricane furnace is using propane while you guys talk. All right, I'm using the scroll of Mosher to boil the first decoction. Nope, it's scorched. What do you do? Frack, scoop it out and try again. Doug, use your math rake. You took too long. The color is now darkened past the point where you can still call it a pilsner. This sucks. Ugh, I hate it when Greg's the brewmaster. What's this? Poindexter Urkel? Dude, can't you see we're in the middle of a brew session? Is that an actual beer? 
Yeah, I crafted it. I don't really use the dice anymore. I'm a 10th level beer nerd. <gasps> Are you a 10th level beer nerd? Do you belch White Labs 833 and crap Simcoe? Then you're in good company at Northern Brewer. Northern Brewer has all your beer nerd needs. Ingredients, equipment, and knowledge 24 hours a day at northernbrewer.com. Plus, fast, cheap shipping. Only $7.99 for the contiguous USA. And check out Northern Brewer's huge selection of dorky beer kits, including the Cylon Detecting 3 Hearted Ale and the collector's item Super Alt. Mine's in mint condition because it's still in the box. Make 10th level at northernbrewer.com. Downtown Joe's, located in the historic Oberon Building in beautiful downtown Napa, California, offers an award-winning brew pub experience from 8.30 a.m. to 1 a.m. every day. For 15 years at the corner of 2nd and Main, Downtown Joe's has been voted Best Night Spot seven times and Best Brew Pub for the last four years in a row. Brewmaster Colin Kaminsky's handcrafted ales, like his Tail Wagon Amber Ale and Double Secret Probation IPA, are the perfect accent to riverside dining, live music, and a relaxing outdoor patio. Don't miss the Beer of the Month, special rotating taps, and the BN Army Member Special. Wear your BN gear, get 10% off your beer. Visit downtownjoes.com to make reservations, peruse their extensive calendar of events, or just read more about their fantastic beers. Come enjoy the fine beer, food, and music. Downtown Joe's, the award-winning brew pub where you'll feel at home. Wait till you can pour it out of your own kegerator. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, your friends will look at you with awe. And, and it's stuff. just hot. It is? It's so super hot. <laughs> <laughs> The home of live beer radio. Because like beer, radio shouldn't suck. You're listening to the session. Keeping the ass out of brewcast. I'm feeling better tasty. How about you? Oh, I'm much better. At ten percent <laughs> beer. That's where I left off, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I, see. I think so. Yeah. You left That's off the with, cure. with you know, and I finally younger. did get a cup of the younger at the end of the evening. Yeah, we Thank had you that. for that. Yeah. Someone uh, poured me a cup, brought it over and Chad and I went up there and uh, Randy and uh, we uh pick up that on a Friday. Maybe we found a new uh, recipe for curing a hangover. You have to start the next day the same way you finished the night before. So we finished with 10%, and we came in with the 9.5 Triple J here. Yeah, that's right. It worked well. You're looking a lot better, yeah, I'll tell I'm you that, Tasty. Yeah. He's actually sounding much better as well. <laughs> I think my voice is coming back. I'm, I'm ready, I'm ready for a full beer. I mean, we've just been sipping. Yeah, I was but, just uh, telling somebody I need more volume here. I mean, maybe we'll do... You know, we, we have to do some traditions for you guys today, so we will order pizza. I mean, that just has to happen. Uh, basically, essentially, you have to leave Super Bowl. James, have you ever been here for a Super Bowl Sunday? You ever been to the US? You, you never have? I used to live in the oh, you United did? States. So yeah. you understand that if you can move from the couch within an hour after the Super Bowl, we've somehow failed. Yes. Uh, you're supposed to feel disgusting. And JP brought over sausage. I did. Is. It's, it's one for JP. It's 14,500 tons of fucking taco chips are eaten in this country yeah. <laughs> today. Uh, and most of that happens at JP's house, I actually. I love chips. I 14 and a half thousand tons. It's a lot of guacamole. You and Jay Brooks should just hang out on Super Bowl Sunday eating hey, chips. Together, I would, but you know? I'm not cool enough. <laughs> he doesn't invite you. No. And it'd probably be awkward. I'd, I'd be all naked and weird. And, <laughs> and he has a family. Let's face it, you creep him out. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> it's true. I had a good question come through from the chat room for you, Justin. Right, and I uh, No, uh, Disco... Actually, I got a phone call, too. Yeah, let me do the phone Take call the first, phone call. Uh, because that way he doesn't have to wait, because I think he's calling in from the UK, too, and I'm probably paying for that. Uh, <laughs> Soil Boy from the UK, what's happening, brother? Hey, guys, how's it going? It's going great. How are you, man? Yeah, good. I thought I'd uh, join the Brit party. Yeah, it could keep the British end up, as they say. Yeah, I mean, they, yeah. Yeah, they need well, help in here. It's early, this early, you see. It's normally after my bedtime, you see. Is it, what time is it there now? Oh, it's only just gone midnight. Normally, you guys don't start until Two, uh, it, yeah. 1 a.m., which is uh, on a Sunday night, which is pretty harsh. So that's I, why you don't normally get m- many Brits compared to Aussies, you see. You're all in bed. I did think about that. Had I done a better job promoting this, we'd probably have a majority uh, UK listenership right now, because we could have gotten people in yeah, on a reasonable you're time. You're not going to get all your usual uh, drunks ringing in, because I'll be watching the... Uh Watching the uh, Super Bowl. That's true. They're, we won't get our usual drunks. We'll just have JP. Oh. No. Well, I'm, I'm what is, I, just, I was just basically ringing just to agree entirely with what the guys have said about the uh, British beer scene. 
because I feel like like them I'm sort of a, in an oasis really just like you know if, if it wasn't for the for the BN and like uh, brew your own you know because I, 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 I basically most of the beer I drink is my own that I brew or or stuff I buy through people like beer merchants and things like that because you know, down your local pub you don't really get a choice because of well the reasons they spoke about before and uh, yeah so they're basically right about everything so but, that's good Eric, they're right about everything. <laughs> no, but I like to yeah, hear this. Not yeah. not just because we doubt what you're saying, but it's nice to hear a home brewer in the UK telling us why he's why you're home brewing essentially. Yeah. Especially one who is apparently running on a treadmill during a phone call. What I know. I'm doing? sorry about the. Uh, oh. It's probably not his fault. The audio quality is yeah, exactly. breathing I've got real hard. A where I can't actually speak on the phone and stand still at the same time. Oh. <laughs> See, so you're actually <laughs> running around it? your flat yeah. right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I've actually got, got a question though for the guys. All right. It, it's, well, yeah, another thing is uh, if I ever mention my kegerator to anyone, I, I think I'm one of the only people with a kegerator. They just think I'm mental. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, you are. Yes. <laughs> it's a good point. Um, so yeah. it, the, this whole shunning of the keg, uh, homebrewers even, to have a kegerator, this is some crazy Actually, novelty you have. Yeah, I have one. Cascarator. Yeah. yeah the cascarator. Uh, Cornelius kegs cost an absolute fortune as well. Really? They cost about 50 pounds, 40 pounds. Ooh. Well, you know what, Soil Boy? Uh, we're going to be giving away six Cornelius oh. kegs in our More Beer Donation giveaway this month. So um, maybe we'll be able to help a uk -er out. Perfect. That will be about £50 shipping for each one, I think. <laughs> yeah, no, the only way, like 11, man. Yeah. <laughs> right. That was a, that was a, that was that was a money joke. The guys, yeah. Yeah. All right. Anything else? Oh, can I just ask a quick, quick question to the guys? Yeah, go they, for they it. Talk, they've talked about the current state of the scene. I just wondered what what they thought the future was going to be like in the UK. So whether it's going to be to a sort of uh, stage where in the States, is, you know, if you've, got, you've got like an IPA in every pub. I just, did, hmm. did they envision it being like that in the future in the UK, or is it just going to... Well, we, there'll be electric like cars, that, gonna I'm going to tell you that. <laughs> what do you think about that? What is the future of beer in the UK? Well, the future is orange. <laughs> <laughs> Always. <laughs> I think... Um, no, no. No, sorry. Go ahead, Phil. It's yeah. It's, it's communication. It's better better communication from front to back, from the producers to the consumers, and making sure that the product's hitting from brewery to yeah, the, the, wherever you're consuming the product, being a pub, being at home. But so, do you think there'll be? I think Soil wants to know: Will there be an IPA on tap at every pub? Is it going to happen that much of a change? I, I would like to see personally. I would like to see it happen, and I think. Mm -hmm. The brewers are there to support it as long as the public is there to drink it. Now, the landlord's stuck in the middle, so they're not going to buy something that they can't sell. So they're, as much as I want to push things out there, we need a bit of pull-through as well. Okay. All right. Does that answer your this, question? Go ahead. Is this going to be the existing breweries? Are they going to adapt for these new beers, or is it going to be new breweries starting up that sort of fill this void? Yeah, that's, that, that's a good that's, question. It's, that's well, a fantastic question. It's kind of what we were talking about slightly off-air, actually. There's... Um, the number of British breweries, and we were actually going to say, I was actually talking to Justin off air, um, there's a series of breweries out there, you know, Lobby Bonds, Adnam, City of Fergus there, young, enthusiastic Colin and Dom at Marble who are producing innovative styles and throwing beers into Barrett Eddie Gad. Um, you know, we, we well know the guys at Brewdog are up to all sorts. Um, and it goes on. I mean, Harvest doing, we're seeing lots of people doing lots of different things. And So how many new breweries? Are, like the U.S. had a crazy boom in the last 10 years, right? So how many is, it, no, what's the ratio there? We've had the same thing. There's about 700 uh, breweries in the U.K. right now. So there's quite a lot for, you know, for yeah. Sort of yeah, yeah, for people. per capita, we're really quite dense with breweries. But okay. it's just there's a series of them who are looking toward the West Coast, looking to the U.S., looking to Denmark, looking to Italy, um, and bringing those new way I mean Justin's one of them and it's it's, it's these, I am. What, the, the, this the new brewing community that's oh. emerging I yeah. mean there's even happening at a big family brewer like Adnams we've got a youngish brewer, head brewer there Adnams Innovation um, was it Bodicea Chinook or Columbus was it oh that was the end of, yeah but the thing is you're seeing these yeah you're seeing these amazing beers coming out of completely left field moments as well so okay yeah alright Sawyer Boy thanks Ooh. brother well, thank you very much Appreciate it. Great show, and uh, yeah. Cheers, mate. Enjoy your uh, Super Bowl. <laughs> <Cheers>. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, right. Cheers, man. Later. Enjoy your Super Bowl. Uh, yeah, enjoy that shitty game you watch. Uh. <laughs> it has nothing to do with feet. <laughs>
Uh, all right. So you run on them. great questions there. I do have another one that came through from the chat uh, from a homebrew perspective. Disco fetus is in there. Why do you talk funny? He says, not <laughs> sure if you're uh, he says, I'm, I'm curious if there's a way to turn my carboy slash bottling bucket into a serving tank for the same kind of a real ale style. So to use it kind of as a, you know, these these plastic buckets we have with a spigot on the bottom um, is can we serve real ale through that? Um, I do know, yes. I can answer this one. Oh, sorry, go ahead. There's a book called uh, Secrets of the Master Brewers, and there's an appendix in the back of that. This is a bit of a sort of like dipping into the arcs, you know, for, for knowledge. And in the back of it, there's a guy called uh, Nick who used to brew at Highland Brewing in, I think they're in Asheville or something like that, and he wrote a description of how about to do this. how to cut off the dip tube and you can actually take out the poppet valves and you can actually turn a corny into a Inverted commas a cask. A corny. Mm. Yeah, but he's talking he's about a, He a, wants oh, a bucket, cardboard. but that's mm. great, too. Yeah. You could do it with a corny that way. What about a bucket? Yeah, you can um, You can do it with the buckets. The The problem is I don't know the name of the brand, but there is a um, there is a plastic bucket that has a lid that sort of secures on there, and you've got the little um, kind of like air rifle screw-on gas cylinder things. So you could basically do that not push it through with the gas but just release the top of the bucket but the you know the whole thing is going to still become freshness so you will o- essentially you, you will oxidize that beer as ice. soon as you start pouring it right Absolutely, because you're pulling in o2 that or you can and this is hugely contentious <laughs> yeah. in the uk you could top pressure it um, but not with those the screw on cylinder types because you're going to basically over gas it okay the, the point of cask is three day service like you know it comes from a brewery sits in a cellar you know, forever long. I think as soon as it's vented, it's it's live. It's a right. live product. It's unpasteurized, unfiltered. Bum. It's going to deteriorate rapidly. So you've got three days service, and that's even closing the. That sounds like a lot to me. Three days, even. I mean, I've had a well, keg of beer. You know, you know, in in, in college, you get those hand pumps, right? Mm. That's how you pour it out of a keg, and the the very next day, that beer tastes like shit. You're pumping in all that oxygen, mm. right? So even three days sounds like a long time to me. But don't forget to get those kegs would have been filtered. Exactly. But yeah, whereas uh, this yeah. has got yeast in, so it's got, you know... That's an excellent point, yeah. That's mm-hmm. right. A little stability, yeah. Well, and even so, yeah, dude. so Triple Rock throws this great uh, firkin fest every yes. year, mm-hmm. and they, you know, so everyone brings in these cask firkins, and that beer's gone that day, and it's great to have that beer served that day, but if we were to go in the next couple of days, man, that stuff would just be raunchy, you know, so... We've got, we've got I mean, you've got cooling jackets and things like that. There's equipment mm-hmm. for... Um, to maintain your product and, and things like that. It's sanitary air filters probably and stuff like that. Yeah, there that. is actually the, the little um um breathers or Yeah, little non return valves that sit on the top. They they and then you get ones with like a, a mushroom top that's got a little filter paper on top. Oh, yeah. The old uh, mushroom cat, tip. Cast breathers. Yeah. 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 Captain Beef Hot. <laughs> All right, so we're going to open these uh, Jesus beers right now. One is from, what, 85? And... Uh, yeah, this actually, yeah, James and I have been talking about this. It's um, 1985. Cut. Should we grab, cl- should we do yes. these the honor of a bunch of clean, small glasses? Can we do that, Chad? Yes, please. Uh, that way, or, or at least uh, maybe a pitcher of water we could T- rinse Tasty's ours. Tasty's jammed up his nose, so and, how's that? Uh, it smells musty. That's nice. Does it smell, can I smell out of the bottle, too? What you should expect. And, um, um, let me read what both of these are. So, yes. uh, what we have here is a, tar- a Thomas Hardy's <laughs> Ale, It's uh, and, and what age is this? Oh, 87 is this one. Um, and then the one that we've opened here, it's an uh, Imperial Russian Stout from 1985. Wow. Uh, brewed in the UK. What brewery is this? Courage. Courage Brewery. Mm, that's a uh, doesn't exist anymore. Doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. Well, neither them actually. Eldridge Pope doesn't exist anymore, yeah. and they've actually just stopped brewing Thomas Hardy's as well, because um, that was being sort of brewed Bre- down the brewed road from you. Contract in, uh, in uh, Devon. Yeah. Yeah. They will see the the fire. Is it Firefly or something? Okay. No, Hamlin's. Oh, Hamlin's. Yeah. 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 Mm. Perfect. There we go. We got some glasses here. This one had an OG of ten ninety eight. I like how we're drinking. Uh, uh, this is going to be class. What twenty year old beer out of plastic cups? Yeah. I really like that. JP, I said I like it. Deal with it. I like it. This other one, the Hardy's Ale, at least back in 87, was touted the strongest beer in Britain. Is this, is, would that still be true, do you think? No, at no. Six no longer <laughs> true, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Also, the brewer wore nutters. You can smell as, the observation. As they did in 87. Yeah, it's really sherry-like, right? Yeah. And uh, uh, it even looks interesting. Yes, Gabby. While we're pouring the beers, I have a question from Bike Foolery. Okay. Uh, he'd like to know what styles benefit from being on cask be, uh, 
for English English styles. Okay, that's a good question. What styles do benefit being on cast rather than that uh, wretched that beyond, keg? I guess beyond English styles also. Oh, okay. So even so, maybe even uh, American styles. What would benefit from being on cast? It's like, um, really amazing. Personally, I think just about any style of beer can benefit from being on cask depending on what your expectation is and how strictly you want to adhere to style guidelines and, and preconceived expectations of what something should be. So I mean, we, we even have breweries that do lagers in a cask, and they call them cask lagers. So they're going to be served you know, a bit warmer, less gas in them, but they still come through okay. But traditionally, the ones I think that are going to be show their nature best are going to be beers that basically your pale ales, your bitters, your milds, your porters and stouts, um, your barley wines, uh, and also beers on the lower end of the gravity scale. So a beer, if you're brewing a bitter, generally don't stick it in the bottle. If you're brewing anything that's under 5%, and I mean, I'm guilty of it because I have people that ask me, they want the beer they get at the pub, they want to put it in the bottle. Mm -hmm. So I went against what I initially said I was going to do when I put my two session strength beers in bottle but only to sell really in the local area because uh, I want it drunk fresh. But low-gravity beer doesn't work so well in the bottle. It works fantastically well in cask. Okay. All right. Good guidelines. All right. What are you guys thinking about this beer right now? So we've opened this. I'm just trying to break it down. I, I'm man. very surprised, actually, just how good it is. Really? Yeah. I think it's going to need to uh, breathe I, for a while, yeah? in my opinion. That's a, that, that's a good point. It's almost, it has to be decanted, this beer. Well, the first sniff that I got was pure just straight blue cheese. Yeah. Yes. I got just pure oxidation. It's just like whack. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and then it went away pretty quickly, um, uh, and so I'm getting a lot of like raisin, I'm uh, actually really like mushroomy, kind of musty, mushroomy, and I then had, I get like raisin. I've had a lot of aged beers, and it's funny, it's the reason I work with a number of breweries in the UK is because they don't tend to provide me with complete shit. And <laughs> That's the, weird how yeah, that works. And, should um, start doing that. Yeah. yeah the, um, and to actually have beers that actually get to me sometimes at six months old that aren't complete bottle bombs with brain infections and um and then to have a th beer was we tried to do the maths earlier was it 30 something years old <laughs> and it's fine but it's a little bit flat but it's it's, it's really oh. soy sauce not only in the look but in the flavor mm. which is i would say it's actually a, a strong quality about it that i don't like mm. the other qualities though that i think you're talking about are the really nice one it is very raisiny mm. it, it does have a basement character but Ten years ago, I think it would have been quite nice. Yeah, well, there is a hell of a lot of soy sauce going on there. But I'm not, it's actually a lot better than I thought it was going to be. Yeah? I was really, I was actually shitting myself, to be blunt, that these were going to be complete. Now, this was the Russian Imperial Stout, mm. so it. I would say, I, I would still pick it out as a Russian Imperial Stout. It still has kept that character to it. It just... Mm. Yes, yes. I, I have a bit the of a hang, hang up with aged beers. I mean, there's a... There's a, there's a uh, I, I always, I really do encourage people. I know it sounds a bit stupid, and you know, being a, a beer... Retailer, you know, you take it home, drink it, take it home, drink it. It's, it sounds like I'm trying to profiteer off of them, right? It's not. But you a, believe in fresh. But I've, this is a beer that would have done well with some age. I, I think that one year old it mm. wouldn't have been at its peak. You know, there are some oh. beers I think that need to to peak. I think also JP's right about this one that it it needs to air a little bit. It needs to be decanted. It needs to sit open because it's it's getting better already. Actually, yeah, it's not as bad. Do you as like it, JP? Um, I do. I'm, I'm trying to digest. I mean, I I don't want to like taste it like uh like we you know we're just tasting a homebrew and kind of oh that was good. And I really want to take like ten fifteen minutes with this one. Yeah, personally, except yeah. that we only have about eight. Well, yeah. then we don't have. To. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't, I'll go last. Yeah, okay, good, yeah. Why don't you come back to me? Uh, well, we've got another one to try too. We don't need to rip it all apart on the air either. That could get boring for the listener. No, but I just wanted to talk about uh, you know just some of its characteristics well, anyway. I mean, I think it, uh, personally, I think it's really interesting. I mean. How many people are ever going to be able to try a beer this old that was probably taken care of as well, uh, you know, better than, than you. what we do? Or how you know many people I mean? know Phil? There's a lot of people well, that know Phil. Well, that's true. Yeah. But how many people are actually going to get to taste yeah. this beer? Probably yeah. not a whole lot of people. So for me, I'd be really interested to hear how a beer like this lasts over 20 years, you know? Yeah. It would have been nice to have, say, 20 bottles and open one a year and just to see the degradation or improvement, you know, it would have been... Yeah. That's a good point. Why didn't you... What, you failed. Slacker. Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> well, let's try the other one next to it, too. Why not? Yeah, we don't have to good. finish this one to get the other one. We've got some kind of... We've got water here we can rinse some glasses with. And, um, yeah, I want to open the Hardee's. I'm a fan of, of, of Hardee's. Uh, I've had one of those before. And J.W. Lee's, another great uh, barley wine from the U.K. 
I've uh, had some aged ones that I really enjoyed. So that's what you said, and I, I, and ever since you said the JW Lees, I've only been able to find their Harvest, and I don't really like it so much. Well, but I've one, never been able to find their barley wine. It was uh, the one I had was like a 1987. Also, oh, it really? was. In fact, if you uh, occasionally, if you really uh, either ask nicely or dig into their menu, uh, the Toronado tends to keep some old uh, you barley know, wines around. You know, the irony is, is so, um, it's actually harder to get bloody JW Lees in England than it is than it is here. Yeah, interesting. I'm lucky. I've actually got one pub up the road of me called the Butcher's Arms in Hearn, and it's a tiny. He brands himself as a called a micro pub. And it's a tiny, tiny, tiny little venue. And, you know, fifteen people standing up. Ask Roger and Claudia when he, I took them there when they were over with me. Yeah. And um, it's a fun joint. But he has some of the best collection of JW Lees um, going. But it's the only. Whereas you can walk into bottle stores here and you can have ten different flavors. It's just yeah, so fucking annoying. Now I've <laughs> had the J uh, the JW Fresh too, JP, and. Yeah. It's not great. It has no. to. That's a beer that has to be aged. So the one that I had that was was old was uh, it was nice, man. This Tastes like a basement, is, but it's like a tangy. Yeah, it's like a tang. See, that's what no I malt, really. picked out as the soy sauce thing. Yeah. That's the tang. Salty. What do you get out of yeah. this, Justin? I don't think it's so soy saucy, but uh, just salty tang, tang. And no malt. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a really interesting thing to try and see how something you know does work over was that sort of twenty five years time. Mm-hmm. Um, hmm. So I, I think it's very interesting, and we are picking out a lot of the characteristics of it. I think the one thing we probably haven't talked about is drinkability, and obviously it's not a beer that I think we would choose to drink. Yeah. But is it triple hops brewed? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if it was cold filtered, it would have more drinkability. <laughs> yes. I'll give you that. It does not have a drinkability. It's a it very. It, in fact, it barely has sipability. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's uh, aroma is fantastic, but the flavor is um, not. But <laughs> <laughs> but it's not. I don't know. It's still really yeah. Good. It's still it's good. It's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. All right, this one smells better already to me. Mm. Wow, <clears throat> big chocolate. Don't do that. <laughs> do not chomp into that That's microphone. Good. God damn it! <laughs> that resonated too. That was like right in yeah. there. Like yeah. The, not even off it mic. Again? The yeah. chompiest yeah. chomp I've ever heard. Uh. <clears throat> This one smells fantastic. It is big chocolate and big raisin, too. Mm. See, I'm, I like old beer. If for nothing else, they're interesting as hell. Mm-hmm. Not for drinkability, as we're saying, but, man, is it interesting to they're find like, out what they like do. Museum pieces, aren't they? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just to kind of focus on. I'm getting cocoa powder in the first one in the aroma. Okay, this one's drinkable. Mm-hmm. This is pretty fucking good. This, one. this, is a, <laughs> this one's awesome. And it's not real uh, musty and basementy that would have taken over. This one's nice. Woods, did you get to try these? Are you all right? I want to make sure you get some of this stuff. Wow. So this one is—is is this the eighty-five or the eighty-seven? That's eighty-seven. This one's one. eighty-seven. I like to date girls that were born in eighty-seven. So do I. Tell me about it, huh? <laughs> yeah. And apparently, I also like barley wines from the same year. Weird coincidence? <laughs> I yes. don't think so. Yes, it is. No. <laughs> these were both bottle conditioned, were they not? I guess it's back in the day, isn't it? So, hmm. so the carbonation is gone entirely, right? That didn't hold. Uh, is, well, is there it, is yes. there a bottle on Earth that could uh, hold carbonation for that long? Good, some girls probably. Yeah, if it's corked, maybe. Mm. But this it says on the back here. It says you know its flavor will improve. It's stored at twelve degrees C or fifty five degrees Fahrenheit, and will imp- will last for at least twenty five years. Oh, is that right? Mm-hmm. Well, there you go. They yeah. knew what they were talking about. <laughs> yeah, they did. Good thing we were drink it today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because yeah. tomorrow this would have been shit. Yeah. yeah. So, but good it timing. Kind of, it kind of smells like a mash to me. It doesn't smell like uh, like wordy, but it just smells kind of grainy but uh, sweet at the same time. It's it's like you're smelling a, a, a mash that's halfway there. Or you're about to sparge or whatever. Yeah. For me. I get that. I don't the know, second one's really nice. The second one, yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. Well, this is nice. Thank you, Phil. I appreciate you sharing this with us, man. This well, we, is we this got, one's really nice. We got more out the back. All right. Well, we're doing that off the air. Great. <laughs> People listen to us smack our lips. All day. they're going to get pissed off <laughs> yeah. having to listen to us taste this wonderful beer. What do you mean, we white man? <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. Well, this is nice, uh, and yeah. I appreciate you sharing it with us. And uh, we're going to wrap mm. things up. Um, I would take, I guess, if there are any, if there was anybody bold enough to be drunk of the week at this point in the day, I will take that phone call eight 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 four zero one beer. Gabby's waiting, but do it fast. I'm not going to stick around. We got to go watch commercials and eat pizza. Very important things like that. Drink goose. 
That, uh, uh, fill, well, the rest of us are going to drink. Oh, uh, what am I going to do? I have to drink these? <laughs> yeah, you have to. You have to finish the Russian Imperial Stout. They're sour, like tangy, like um, yeah. There's a sour, not like contaminated sour, but but like That's sour weird, mash man. sour. Like, yeah, it's it's um it's weird. It's bizarre. I love it. I was taking notes, but then I give up because I'm not going to do anything with them. Right, you're just going to sit there until I clean off your area <laughs> yeah, anyway. Much, dude, yeah, <laughs> That's great, dude. I'm going to blow. No, all right, fuck. It. Right, all right. Eight 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 four zero one beer. Do it now or forever. Hold your drunken peace because we are getting out of here. Justin, James, Phil, thanks, guys. Yeah. Appreciate you coming in here. Um, you can go to, uh, what is it? It's more, M O O R beer.co.uk. Did I get that right? Yep. yep. More beer.co.uk. You can check out these beers that we're talking about and, um, you know, visit the brewery, I guess, yeah. right? Come come visit Justin out there. Let I us know. know you're coming. We'll try and show you around. All right. I know our lawyers will be out there very soon. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and what's the location? Uh, where is it? We're in Somerset. So we were literally in the middle of the sticks. Uh, we're about 150 miles west of London. Would so, you call it the Pacheco of the UK? Is it that? Uh, it's even further. Is that oh. right? Oh! Yeah. And, mm-hmm. and there ain't no public transport out there. So. There isn't. <laughs> but you have Mexicans. We have those. Oh, no, we don't have those. And it's not <laughs> the Pacheco <laughs> of the UK. Guess where I'm moving. Oh, what? What? Hey, Chris Killinger's on the Skype. What's up, Chris? Hey, it's not actually Junk of the Week. I have a brewing question still. All right, go for oh. it, man. Um, I'm brewing tomorrow, and I'm considering making starter wort out of the regular wort that I'm drawing off the louder ton. And any advice on when I should do that? Take the first runnings or the middle, the last runnings, that type of thing? I don't think it matters. You just It depends on what your gravity is running yeah. out of there. So, what, 1030, 1040, 1040 something like that? Something. Why don't you wait yeah. till you boil the, the wort? Why, why take it off the... Uh... I didn't think I'd want all the hops in there. No, that'd be fine. No, that wouldn't have any problem at all. Yeah, it doesn't hurt your beer. You're gonna pitch right back in the beer the next morning, right? Yeah. No, 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 no. I'm gonna. Oh, oh you're gonna store it. Tomorrow, at least I already have, and making a starter oh. for next week. Oh, okay. Uh, um, well, yeah, you just set the boat on the stove or something. Sure. Um, sure that's what I. Would I would do. take the middle just to get you know uh, something like what is the, tar- yeah. the starting target gravity of your uh, of your batch? Uh, gonna be mid ten fifties. And then you'll take it pretty early because you want like a ten forty starter, right? Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Try to match your beer is what you're saying. Well, just starters in general should be a little bit lower gravity to give the yeast uh, make it easier. Sure. Yeah, you don't want to yeah. flip Don't add any beer. hops at all, right? Well, yeah, in this case I wouldn't, right? Because that's, you know. Well, a little hops actually would give you some storage, uh, you know. It stabilized it a little bit. Hmm. It would. I've be. seen see, yeah. uh, starter instructions that say add like a few pellets of hops. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It wouldn't matter. Basically. Why not? It wouldn't hurt a thing. Yeah, it's not going to hurt, is it? No, no, no. All right. And does it ma- does it matter the grist composition? No, 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 no. No, it's just Anything. sugar. This is going to be heavy, heavy on rye, but that's no issue. That shouldn't be a problem at all. Well, what do you what do you what are you dumping it into? Uh, I'm going to use uh, triple eventually, but I'm not going. I'm going to decant the wort first. Oh, okay, good. And you're going to wash yeah. it probably. I wasn't going to. Oh. Well, th- if you're going to decant the wort, then yeah, just take it off the boil. The hops won't really matter. Yeah. That'd be easier. That's what I'd do. Yeah. Okay. Take your 1050 beer. If you want to add some boiling wa- boiled water to it to dilute it, or you can just make it 1050. That's fine. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, gentlemen. Thanks, Chris. You're welcome. Later. All right. And it looks like I have Kulsh Brewer on the line calling in for Drunk of the Week. Kulsh, what's happening? Hey, Justin, what's going on? Not much. How are you, brother? <laughs> oh, man, let me tell you, listening to you on the live feed and over the phone at the same time, it's totally psychedelic, dude. I like that shit. <laughs> I like that. He's calling in for Mushroom Guy of the Week. <laughs> I'm listening to you right now well, on the live feed. Like that, yeah. yeah. It's great. All right. Uh, you want to give us your resume? Well, I've been going no. strong for about 70, uh, 72, seven and a half hours now. We I had went a, to university. We uh, brewing session at the local homebrew store. Where are you calling from? Uh, Florida. Okay. Gainesville. All right. And uh, some guys were brewing out there, and I had a couple of dogfish head chicory stouts out there and some homebrew samples and came home and just been drinking porters and stouts and coaches and whip beers, just kind of like my whole archive of homebrew. Got it. Since then. And well, the room's starting to spin, man. Well, and you. do you sound creepy like this normally or just when you're drunk? Because that will be a good indicator. Uh, I have not usually been told that I'm all that creepy when I'm uh, sober. Okay, well, I'll put that on the resume then. We'll Most see. creepy people creepy aren't told creepy. because no one wants to talk to a creepy person. <laughs> you know JP I mean? knows this. Yeah, I've never been told. Yeah. Uh, all right. Yeah. 
Uh, I think uh, JP and I would make uh, a pretty good team by now. A good couple? Sweet well, love. I'm not sure about that. I'm not yeah. sure how my wife would feel about that. We would make good uh, adoptive parents. You don't know until you ask. That's what he's saying. All right, I've got you on the list, uh, and I have Creepy as your resume. <laughs> oh, I appreciate that. <laughs> I'm going to sum it up. Thanks, Creep, creepy thanks for calling. Why are you not watching the Super Bowl? What are you listening to us Yahoos for? Oh, uh, you know, I don't really care about pro football, okay. so it's actually the first live show I've listened to in, in ages. So. I see. All right. How well, many ages? <laughs> Since 87. In years. Uh. All right. Well, thank you for tuning in, brother. I've got you down on the list for Drunk of the Week. Thank you. Talk right to you later. On. Later. All right. 888-401-BEER. Make it snappy, kids. Creepy Otherwise, Kulsh. we're giving it to Creepy Kolsch, yep. which I don't know, you know. Good I, name. I believe him. Sounds believe like him too. if he says the room is spinning, I tend to believe that. If he told me that uh, he had a skin suit at his feet, I would tend to believe that. <laughs> it sounded like he was he was going well until he, uh, he sobered up when you asked him where he was from. He's like, Florida. <laughs> <laughs> Florida. I'm still in Florida. Yeah. Gabby's wearing a nice, uh, oh, it's not Winterfest. I thought I saw Winterfest shirt on you. Yeah. No, it is Winterfest. Oh. <laughs> I wasn't, uh, you know, I'm not the label whore today. You're not today. <laughs> Gabby usually is. She's yeah. our she's our, our the local beer scene's label whore, <laughs> and we all brand girl. we all yeah. brand her. We yeah. like, we sign up for days, so we call it Gab- So Gabby, can I have Tuesday or what? What the yeah. fuck? What are you gonna no, do? She just makes my t-shirt, <laughs> uh, yeah. especially during SF Beer Week. We yeah. need you know you're like a billboard. Actually, maybe we'll give her some uh, B and A four shirts. I hear those are still for sale. <laughs> yeah. I already have one of those. Yeah, yeah. Maybe she probably has like eight. <laughs> yeah, have four more. And you make a dress out of them. What do you have for us, Gabby? Lobber says uh, his wife says JP should grow his side hair and make buns. I don't know what that means. And make buns. Buns. I can't grow like hair a, on the top of my I head think anymore. Princess Leia buns you can grow side hair, though, can't you? I can grow side hair. She wants hair, you to grow yeah. side hair, and I tend to agree with this no. notion that you have side hair. No. Well, I do have side hair. <laughs> you should grow it out. You Why is great. everyone looking at my head right ah. now? We want, I want you to look like the white George Jefferson, <laughs> and I want you to have side hair, like really thick side hair. Yeah. <laughs> Would you do this? I'll give you a raise. How about oh. that? Oh, <laughs> all right. Two inches? or. <laughs> You don't think that'd be a fun thing to do? No, I don't think it'd be fun at all. Listen, you're not dating anyway. What's That's the difference? Well, um, because I gotta, w- yeah, I gotta work, and no one at work would. would, would you appreciate. sit in a corner. No one talks to you at work either. I wish. There is no downfall to this uh, <laughs> to this experiment, JP. I think it's a perfect way to. Make you feel good. <laughs> make, yeah. yeah, that's right. To make me feel good. Yes, that's what I mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. All right, so Chad, are we satisfied with Kolsch being our winner since we're obviously not being inundated with phone calls? With who? Let's do it. Right. Creepy He's Kulsh. the winner. Creepy Kolsch, our drunk of the week, ladies and gentlemen. Right. Our drunk of the week is brought to you by Dark Candy Inc. Uh, we'll send you some Belgian candy sugar courtesy of Dark Candy Inc., and then you can brew something creepy with it. As soon as my mom gets around to it. Tell us all about it. That's right. All right, once again, Justin, thank you very much for yes. coming out here. No, thanks for having us. Fantastic. All right, you go to morebeer, M-O-O-R, beer.co.uk. You can check it out. Uh, if you're in the U.K., find this beer, man, especially that Fusion. Oh, man, is that a good yeah, beer. Really Triple J was nice. In fact, even very nice. But, <laughs> but that Fusion is something else. You did a nice job. It's extra no, well, Thank nice. you. Well, coming from a Californian, that's great. It's. I'm telling you, you put that into any barrel-aged uh, uh, festival or competition or anything else, you're going to do very, very well. I love that beer. James, thanks for hanging out with us. Good luck with the pub. Keep uh, spreading the good word of beer. Yep. What's Drink the it. name of the pub? You want to give uh, a shout? The Queen's Arms right. in Colton Denham. You love your queens out the there. Queens, <laughs> a lot like San Francisco. That's true. <laughs> different colored flag, though. It's well, very okay. different. And Phil from Beer Merchants. You check out, was it just beermerchants.com? Yeah, we keep it easy for you Americans. It's beermerchants.com. All right, beermerchants.com. You can follow Phil on Twitter like I do, uh, twitter.com slash beermerchants. No, you don't. I don't. I see your posts all the time. I started following you because you talk about us. Oh, <laughs> maybe I should start following you. Yeah. Talk about me. Exactly. All right. Are we done here, Chad? Yep. Next week, Celebrator Party. Be there. That's right. Oh, Go that's to right. Celebrator's Best of the West. It's at uh, Trumer Browry. Browry. Brewery. Whatever. And hopefully it'll be actually live and not pseudo live when we broadcast pseudo-live. so that you folks can listen at home, too. If not, I'll post it as soon as possible. Gabby, anything else over there? Oh, um, Blubber wanted me to say Joyzy. He wanted to say what? Joyzy. 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 What the hell does Blobber know about Joyzy? Nothing. <laughs> All right, everybody. So next week, Thanks, celebrate, Blubber. and then we're off the week after that. Finally, 
We get an off week. Tasty. All you're right. I'm ready You're for allowed it. to take a day off. How about that? That'd be great. All right. Uh, rest your livers, everybody. We're back at it tomorrow at the Sour Beer Fest at Triple Rock. We'll That's all right. be there. Oh, yeah. Enjoying ourselves. Check out sfbeerweek.org. Please come out to my uh, panels that I'm moderating. I was joking earlier, but they're going to be a lot of fun. And we got great people on the panels. Uh, Steve Wagner uh, uh, from Stone and uh, Dan, for, uh, the Dan uh, from Gordon Beersh. Lots of great people. Rogers on one of my panels. They're Tuesday and Wednesday at the Marriott. Go to sfbeerweek.org. Check it out. Come out. Hang out with me. You get some free beer out of it, I think. So, all right. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next time. Thanks again, guys. Cheers. Yeah, you